your body, girl, it look like woe. Body no pop down, body don't need no toe. When I do something so you won't leave God, they know. Broke out, broke out, make the whole world know.
What is up, my Pog Champlings? We are back in the studio. It's Phil yes. and Gio, all the way from Basingstoke, finally in our spiritual home, ready for playoffs. And that's right, the entree that is the group stage is over and done. We're now on to the main course that is playoffs, getting closer and closer to that delicious dessert that is the grand finals at Insomnia 65. And Gio, how are you feeling? I'm feeling, I'm glad you said I-65 because I would have undoubtedly accidentally said I-64. <laughs> I'm also feeling good because I am wearing the jersey of uh, one of the teams that are going to be in the playoffs today, which Phil is not doing. No, so I'm, I'm, I'm he representing picked his priorities, my, my home he picked team. Them yeah, wrong. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as Gio pointed out, they match my eyes nicely, so I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, it's a, they it's really a good, do. It's a good package. <laughs> but no, I'm really excited because this is the part of the tournament where we get to seeing, you know, the really well-matched teams where we're seeing some much higher tier Overwatch. And, you know, we get obviously these high tier teams throughout the group stage, but because they have to play everybody in their group, you kind of sometimes see them not always playing their best because they know that there's a little bit more of a skill disparity. So in this case, they actually have to fight a little bit harder for what it is that they're trying to achieve and to get into that finals. So I always get really excited about this because it means that we're probably going to see some really juicy stuff. We're going to see some, uh, you know, a lot more characteristic things of the teams and indicative of their own individual play styles. Um, and especially as, you know, we're on the verge of a meta shift. We're still playing on, I believe, 1.38 today the live patch we are playing on the live patch so uh you know there's not a 222 lock just yet but the point is is we are on that verge of a meta shift which means that yes while these teams can still play goats if they wish they're likely i think going to start trying to play uh, or, or will have been scrimming some things that allow them to succeed in that next coming meta where it is the 222 log and playing a little bit more of those dps heroes and we know that some of the the players in these teams anyway are really good DPS heroes as well so I am really looking forward to seeing that and a little bit more variety than what uh, you know we perhaps might have seen this time last season yeah because I mean this time last season we were seeing a lot of goats except where it was necessary for players to you know bust out a, a surprise hero and right. just wreck with that because nobody was expecting it um, and I, I think you're right we are going to be seeing a lot more variety so one of the one of the really nice things about being at this level of play is that we're seeing the players who are themselves top tier players on the ladder yeah. and the sort of people who are likely to have been playing on the PTR in that 2-2-2 lock and figuring out what works already so yeah. I, I'm expecting we're going to see some uh, some spicy stuff coming through yeah so we obviously won't be seeing any Sigma just yet have you played Sigma yet? No, because I'm a console player and we don't yeah. get the PTR. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, you can see the bracket, the playoff brackets up on your screen right now. So today we're going to be looking at Saints versus Lionhearts and Pirates versus Steelers for our quarterfinal matches. Yeah, which is, if you look at the, the top seeds from last season, there's a lot of familiar names here, but we won't have seen Pirates, we won't have seen Swarms, and I don't think we saw Lionhearts at the end of last Absolutely season. Absolutely not. We did not see Lionhearts <laughs> at the end of last season. So this has been a real turnaround for a lot of these teams, and in some cases, you can see why that's happened. You know, the, the moving of Pachak over to Plymouth for the Pirates makes a lot of sense as to why that team is doing quite so well. But enough about the Pirates, because we're not going to be seeing them play Plymouth. just yet. Sorry. Sure it's Portsmouth. Portsmouth, thank you. Uh, peace. <laughs> Something muff. It's close <laughs> enough. So yeah, here are our teams for today. Saints coming up against Lionhearts. You'll be happy to hear, guys. Lionhearts this time playing with their own account, so we'll be able to correctly identify yes. Beam Claws and not uh, <laughs> not just the Belong Arena account this time. But uh, a, a couple of familiar names here, particularly on the side of the Saints. Yeah, and these are two teams. We've mentioned it throughout the group uh, you know, stage as well, but these are two teams that have had those roster switch-ups. So we've got some new faces in them, which has kind of helped change them a little bit over the course of this season. And of course, as you say, old faces like Magic Marv we have sitting there in Saints who actually made a role switch this season. Last season, we saw him primarily on the Lucio, the main support role. Whereas this season, when we've carted him, he's been sitting on the main tank role. So there have been some of those changes and bringing in some higher tier players as well to join the ranks. So, you know... Lionhearts versus Saints is going to be the Battle of the Capitals, <laughs> and uh, it's actually going to be really excited. Saints, as we all know, they were the ex-champions back from the winter season at the end of last year, and they made it to the finals last season, didn't actually manage to clinch that spot spot as the champion but the fact that they are still able to maintain that high tier spot in the tournament is really great and of course Lionhearts as you say they didn't make it to playoffs last season so this is their chance to actually prove themselves. 
Yeah, and they've got a lot of proving to do. I think it's worth noting uh, a couple of players that we have commented on before. Um, Hazard in particular, Hazard, Hazard, not Hazard, Quantum is actually <laughs> not in the roster on this opening map. I was going to talk about what we've seen coming out from Quantum, but I have been hard debated. But here we go, coming in to Busan, starting on uh, Temple. I actually find it really interesting, the Saints here, are they opting to run the Widowmaker because it's not necessarily the sort of uh, point that you expect to think of long sight lines, but it could put a lot of pressure onto Lionhearts as they start to come in on their engage. They're going to be following in that Reinhardt who is starting to lose popularity, Phil. Yeah, but the Can of Worms has been open with support bottom taken offline and obviously with no mercy on the side of the Lionhearts they are down and out and have now made the swift over onto the Anna Frost by with a mercy pocket trying to get in over the top and chase some of the Lionhearts out as Saints are going to take first possession at this point. Switching over to that Anna is actually going to be really key here for Lionhearts because Saints are running this more dive-centric type composition. You want to be able to have that sleep on your side. And of course, the nano boost can come in useful later on, but it's more about the anti-dive abilities and being able to also have that anti-nade. But having Kai taken down really early there, it's really hindering Lionhearts' uh, engage. Yeah, I mean, that uh, almost feels like cheating on the Widowmaker v Widowmaker there, just sending your <laughs> Sombra in to do that fight for you. Um, so a bunch of swaps coming out for the Lionhearts to try and deal with what the Saints are running. Yeah, and also look at, you know, how close the members of Saints are to their ults. We just had Cronenberg flipping onto his Infrasight, but Frostbite is very, very close to the Barrage, and this is a very close-knit map, and especially if Lionhearts are being held back towards their spawn so much, at this point in the in the uh, in the point Ooh. this could be like really key for there to be a barrage come out oh well that's a big opener the Cronenberg down frostbite chased away quickly on the back of that so we have still got a couple of ults uh, on coming online but not going to be enough we did get the res and the barrage in over the top a lot of that eaten by the defense matrix beam claws able to get in there and finish off frostbite but that might have been enough doing especially with book magic Mar finally getting those mines on point making it very hard for the lion hearts to get in and actually start lifting that don't worry McMahon Magic Marv, nobody saw you hit that uh, hit that pillar and stop the spin. Wasn't quite able to stop the remake coming through with the power driver, so that is going to be um, Roman Spider able to get back into the mech. Doesn't quite have the ultimate ready to go. Lynx here looking to try and charge up that EMP, not able to find a target just yet. Nice placement of the bubble by the Winston from Lionhearts. However, Saints looking like they were in charge of this fight. They have stepped off the point and given that over to Lionhearts, but they may be just enough in charge of this fight to bring that back. Well, they have so much percentage on the board that they don't need to panic too hard as long as they're not investing their ultimates. They want to be drawing those ultimates out from Lionhearts who do have a number sitting here right now. But for some of those players, it's the first ultimate they've had thus far in the game. So if they can draw them out, allow uh, you know Beam Claws to bring out his Primal Rage and, and don't get caught too much up in it, then Saints will have a really good opening, especially if they follow up on this EMP that Lynx has because it's just going to stop them from using anything. Phil! Yeah, EMP coming in, hits four, but taking out themselves. Roman Spider able to get one kill onto Lynx already, and uh, we are going to see Magic Marv having put the minefield onto point, not able to find anything just yet, but it has bought space. Cronenberg able to find Rix and take them out of the fight. The minefield finally starting to do work. Book Magic Marv coming in with that weighty hamster mech, taking them right down. Manages to avoid the self-destruct as well, so that self-destruct didn't buy as much space as they maybe would have liked. Lionheart still in control of the point, but Frostbite has the Dragon Strike ready to go. Might not need it here whether they have flipped the point over the chase is on to try and get the Winston as they leave no need to use it though last second d coming in onto Roman Spada who is maybe going to want that back at a bit of a stagger at the end of the fight something that has been so key for Saints here and will likely allow them to just win this point outright is the fact that their DPS player has been playing so aggressively even the Widowmaker been playing so far forward and it's just allowed them to put on so much pressure to Lionhearts that has been forcing them back constantly bringing down a member of the team and Lionhearts have not been meeting that. They actually switched onto their DPS a little bit late as they ran that kind of sombre goats from the start. And so they were already a little bit behind. So in this next point here on Mecha Base, I want to be seeing a little bit more confidence and aggression coming out of Lionhearts. It looks like they're looking to default back to that kind of um, Reinhardt Zarya sort of core, which is, you know, not uncommon here on Mecha Base. We are going to be having the Widowmaker, of course, who... 
well, maybe not. They're going to be going for the double May, and we'll be looking for her CC abilities on this point. Using the wall, obviously, very cleverly is very smart on this point. But my point is I want to see Lionheart being a little bit more assertive because that's really what was letting them down in that last fight. Yeah, but that's going to be the over-engagement. Fire strikes exchange support, but in the back, a lot of damage. going to be very difficult to keep that uh, keep anybody alive with the limited healing coming out of the Zenyatta. And in fact, the Saints just come wrecking in their way right through get the team kill before the point even unlocks they can afford just to sit down and relax on the point I find it so interesting here how these roles have once again been switched up in Saints because we actually have Hazard playing on the Reinhardt right now McMagic Marv going over to the Zarya instead of of course the support as we said it just shows the flexibility that this team have and the aggression that they're using as well oh. is just so commendable oh and two walls coming out at the same time there but only one of them really coming out to put any effort into it as, as Earth Shatter comes out from Hazard, who unfortunately gets taken down. Two from Lionhearts went down during that exchange. That might be enough to keep this up alive for the Saints. However, lots of damage coming out now from Spider means that they've managed to get Muck Magic Marv. Frostbite finds the kill on support, but and Cronenberg, he wants that free skill. He wants to be the dominant May on the field, coming in, railing that damage over into Beam Claws, who tries to get out and has gone out. Cronenberg on the chase wants as many kills as possible, though. And I feel it's potentially indicative of the level of coordination that Lionhearts are having, i.e. how it's lacking in comparison to Saints, the fact that they put a three-man anti-nade onto Saints as Hazard brought out that Earth Shatter and they still weren't able to climb up on it. Cronenberg trying to use the Blizzard here. Are they going to catch anybody in it? Oh, yeah, man bought a whole amount of space for Hazard and Book Magic Marv to get in and pile in the damage on the top of that CC. We are going to be seeing a lot more of May in the coming weeks, I think, as the meta shifts. Definitely, and this is one of those maps where you can use the wall to wall off certain members as well as to trap people and that's great for freezing those tanks but look we're seeing these creeping Zaryas here just waiting to use those Graviton Surges and catch all of Lionheart in one go. Well you know we've got two on the field we might see the uh, the double Graviton Surge thrown in there's the first uh, there and the second all piled in into such a small space Moog Magic Marv with a high charge throws it in does receive the Blizzard but again it's probably an ult you're gonna want back if you're Kai because it didn't buy you a whole amount. And I think potentially one of the priorities that Lionhearts have here is really miscalculated because they're constantly trying to bring down Hazard. They slept him a number of times thus far, seeing it right there again. And then still so much value is coming out from the team of Saints. Yeah, I mean, Lionhearts are trying to keep this alive. We've got the sound barrier there, but we've got the counter sound barrier coming up from here. Both teams now don't need to be afraid of taking too much damage. And the anti-nade there coming out from Lynx was huge. It stopped Ricks being kept alive. It stopped Beam Claws being kept alive. Roma Spada going down. One boop kill onto Hazard from Yanni here at the end as maybe a little bit of a consolation prize. Unfortunately, the Moira not quite able to get back onto the point at the end there. And that's going to be Saints taking Busan 2 and 0. Oh. That's really decisive start for the team. And this is a team that we kind of thought were starting to maybe drop off a little bit at the end of last season. So the fact that they've really pulled themselves together and they're showing, as I said, such good coordination, assertiveness, the aggression that they're coming in with. They're building up these ultimates very quickly and they're not wasting them which is actually something that at the beginning of this season I was really critical of them of because they would use a lot of their ultimates in one go it wouldn't necessarily get that much value or they'd kind of waste the last ultimate that they had and that's something that they've really cleaned up and I'm wondering if that's maybe something to do with the fact that they actually have Mia playing on the team right now they didn't have her at the beginning of the season but she's a very experienced tier 3 player she's played in a number of tier 3 teams um, a really really experienced player and because she you know typically plays the main support role uh, sorry the flex support role though she's uh, kind of undertaking some of the main support um, responsibilities in this game thus far she's probably actually quite a good shot caller and have those in-game leader capabilities and you know of course I, I could be wrong this is all speculation but I'm wondering if her implementation in the team is allowing them to have such good target calling and such good coordination in these fights so one of the other things that I think it's worth talking about about is the fact that uh, because of where the, the the Saints team are coming from, it's a it's a university city, yes. and so some people are home for the summer. So it's worth noting that we we have previously seen uh, Curio on yeah. on Saints and other players who 
are not playing this season, we suspect because they've gone home for the summer, they aren't able to play in this split. And so there's a lot of new blood come onto the Saints team. And it's taking a while maybe to actually get that um, that synergy, that rhythm working together back into place. Yeah, that's definitely true. A lot of the players that we have seen on Saints traditionally have moved kind of back to their, their home teams. I think Kuro is actually playing for another team right now where uh, his, his home is. Um, but yeah, you're very right about that. So they have kind of had to fill in these gaps. But it is looking like they've put in a lot of work mm. to actually be able to work together and and read these teams um you know of course this is one point in and, and you don't want to be you know you don't want to jump the gun too far but you know so far in the group stage lion hearts have always been that team that have been very assertive and very confident in their play and this is almost like a different side to them that we're seeing so the fact that saints are a you know, playing in a way that makes them look like the other side of that coin, that says quite a lot, in my opinion. Yeah. One thing I did like to see from the Lionhearts was their read on what the Saints were running, I thought was very good, particularly on that opening map. You know, we saw the swap sweat straight away to get the McCree pick to try and deal with the Pharaoh. So I think their understanding of their win condition is very good. Just needs to see a little bit more better implementation. Yeah, they went for the McCree and the Anna, both those anti-dive heroes, and that was the right choice. It was just a little bit late, and I think think Lionhearts have got to try not to default to these kind of goats-esque compositions if they're going to be going up against this team. Mm. So... Hanamura. Yeah, moving on with the Hanamura, our 2CP. I feel like it's been so long since I've seen this map. It's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's been Paris, 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 I swear. <laughs> like, for so long. Yeah, Saints, though, are going to be running that uh, oink and yoink, that pulled pork with the Orissa <laughs> and the Roadhog in position. Very hard to break past. Oh, nice. Cronenberg with a big opening pick. Support bot taken straight out of the equation. And Cronenberg going for a huge rotation, a cocky rotation, coming straight in, able to pile in a huge amount of damage. And this is actually the second time so far this series that they went straight for support bot at the beginning. And it's pretty smart. You get rid of that player who's going to be providing most of the sustain and most of the healing on your engagement. And you're going to have to, you know, that team's going to have to back out. Yeah. So now Saints... They're stuck behind this wall, but Lynx, of course, on the Hanzo can still get in those angles. Yeah, however, it's a good rotation. They've managed to make their way through the point without anybody uh, being taken down. However, the wall is now gone, so they've only got to wait this out a little while longer, and they can get in there. But two ticks given over already. The Orissa, but Magic Valve has to come into point and contest. Already falling very, very low, trying to play footsie with the shield and get in. In very real danger, they're being taken out by the mace straight away. Two down, however. Lynx has found Yanni, and we've got the D-Mech. Cronenberg still over on the Widowmaker able to find Kai, buying space for Myers to bring Mud Magic Mar back into the fight. A dragon and a Riptide in over the top. Saints look like they're about to hand it over, but they've clawed that right the way back. Uh, I was a little bit questioning when Support Bot brought out that Coalescence because there were already two key members of the team that have been downed at that point, and yes, you can use it to deal in damage, and maybe he thought that could kind of tick things over just to taking that point, but it really wasn't quite enough. He's actually staying on the Moira, so perhaps it would have been more useful to have kept that in his arm. Arsenal, but nonetheless, oh. Saints repositioning here to get back to the original defensive position. And they do have the Valkyrie ready to go, which will provide that damage boost and the healing being popped now oh. as Light has come in. Mad Yanni guys, goes you down. You cannot ignore Cronenberg because he's going to get a headshot at least once every round. Beautiful charge that takes Hazard out in the middle of the res. Roma Claus, Bear Sparta with the self destruct taking Lynx down as well. Frostbite manages to get one, a parting blow, and the D mech with the tire, but it's looking dark. Lionhearts on their third attempt have managed to break point A and it's on to objective B. Managed to do it. Now Saints are going to be changing things up. Actually going to be going for the Genji Anna. Pretty classic. You work for the Nano Blade. Mm, changing the... Okay, the Sombra as well. So they're going to have the EMP <laughs> as well. So this is actually a pretty classic... Uh, a pretty classic composition and of course they can kind of take hold of these high grounds at first and once they do have those abilities ready that's when they can start slicing and dicing through Lionhearts who do have their own ult oh, to start. wow hacked out of the blizzard a huge play coming out there from Cronenberg because that was a massive win potential there for Lionhearts the sleep onto beam claws also and the sand barrier coming out from Yanni it's going to keep Lionhearts alive in this fight as we start to see things maybe tick over in favour of Lionhearts as we get a couple of quick on the board, Hazard and Frostbite down. 
big sleep coming out onto Beam Claws once again. But at this point, Saints are very much fighting a losing fight here because they've got to come into that rally. And we are seeing the contest coming out, but Yanni able to get Lynx out of this as well means that this is all about burning as much time off the clock as possible. We've got Hazard moving over onto the Bastion. Maybe going to rethink that. No coming to set back up, but we've got to get some point presence, guys. The Bastion is great for damage, but you've been walled off. You're relying just on Bastion Marvel, the Wrecking Ball, to keep this alive. And they're coming into a May, which is a horrible position to be in when you're a Wrecking Ball because, oh, that's a big EMP though. Gets all six. Hazard able to get in now and start piling the damage. Uncontested. Gets one. Takes Kai out of the fight. Has the configuration tank form. Now time to go to town on what's left of the Lionhearts and finally stabilize. Finally able to do it as you say, but it did take some effort and actually on the side of Lionheart, Yanni really started to take things into his own hands using that sand barrier to protect the whole team and then he went in and got all these boops and melee kills, started bringing down members, but you're right, once that nano had been used and Hazard had that configuration tank, they were able to just go straight in off the back of the EMP and they had so much power to bring down the members of Lionheart who are now only sitting on the self-destruct, also very close to the blizzard, oh, but here oh, comes oh, that blade. Close quarter three with just the dash reset. Oh, Roman Sparta bringing things right back around. Kai getting two. It was a beautiful dragon blade, but it just wasn't enough. Kai looking to keep this alive for the entirety of the team. Not much left to go. The contest is still there, but Cronenberg taken down. We are going to see this start to take over as we hit 97%. The sound barrier at the end there, and Hazard with a blind pin out from spawn finds Kai. Lynx coming back in on the Doomfist, wants to get in as quickly as possible and cause some disrupt and once more they fought it back but they've got less than three percent of the point to go now less than three percent and two minutes left and Hazard just using his earth shatter there it looked like he was using it as a deterrent but with this much time left on the board perhaps he should have thought about saving it I'm not really sure on that one especially as Beam Force has his coming into this next engage and all of Saints are up here ready to receive it yeah, Beam Claws getting ready to throw it in. There Gets we go! It in. Puts just the one on the ground though. Hazard getting the worst end of that shatter and knocked out of the way. Not a huge amount of follow up coming there. And another big EMP out of Chrono but crucially doesn't get Yanni, who has the sound barrier. All of that overshield now going on to Sal onto Lionheart to keep them alive through that Rick. Falling very, very low. And a another big one. shatter out from Hazard. Generated that so quickly. And the charge, it connects. It takes down Rick. Beam Claws down as well. And that is going to be another one team fight for Saints. We've got just over a minute left to defend. Hazard is just an absolutely fearless main tank. He will go in and he knows that he's going to be getting the support off of his support players. Lynx and Mia have really been doing so much work to keep everybody alive and that's really enabled him. He was able to build up that last Earth Shatter very quickly after using the other one, whereas Beam Claws is a little bit behind. His Earth Shatter, yes, it was great, but he's not building them up quite as fast. Now Lionhearts, they have support block hacked out and the Graviton Surge is ready yeah. to go. Oh, Mug Magic Mark was hungry for that Graviton. Got it so quick. Lobbed it in. Knocked up four of Lionhearts and three kills on the back of that. The chase is on to get rid of what is left of Lionhearts. 30 seconds left to go. Lionhearts might just get another crack at this, but they've not really got a huge amount to do it with. No, it's really actually great use of the bubble by Mug Magic Marv onto Hazard as he was slept at the end there. I really like that. It was very, it showed vigilance, which I think we've been seeing from Saints quite a lot that we haven't necessarily seen quite as much from Lionhearts. Hearts. Now watch out because Cronenberg does have this EMP and we've seen thus far that Saints are very quick to react off of the back of the EMP especially as Lynx does also have the nano oh, that he can use. It gets four and a shadow Frostbite coming in and getting two. The nano at the end just for good luck. He's going to see pretty much an end to the Lionhearts push here as we see that little team kill graphic pop up at the end of the fight. Ooh, yeah, I mean, Saints, they just really kind of had it down as to when it was they were going to be using their abilities. I mentioned it earlier how we did comment at the beginning of the group stage that that wasn't necessarily their strong spot. And it's nice to see that they worked really hard on it. And Lionhearts, I, th I think they do have the right idea. And Yanni especially is working overtime because his positioning and the timing of his particularly sound barrier has been very, very good good to really clutch out Lionhearts in times where they could have potentially all died in a big fight. So I think Lionhearts, 
they need to work a little bit harder at their generation because there's something that saints have really beaten them out on and because saints know exactly when it is that they should be using these ultimates the generation is highly valuable because of course if you're building up uh, ults quickly and then you are using them at poor times then it just doesn't really matter but that's something that saints aren't doing they are using them at very good times so now of course Lionheart's going to be building up their <laughs> own defense here we it looks like we're going to be seeing that Batiste coming out and having more of this kind of bunk composition of course with Kai sitting there on the Soldier 76 with his own biotic field that means that he will be able to provide himself his own healing and not have to worry so much about the support from support bot which means he'll likely be able to deal in a lot of the damage boost into Rick's on the Bastion. Yeah and of course helps build up that tactical visor at the same time always yes. used to have especially if you've got control of the high ground like this such a difficult thing to displace this kind of bunker particularly for the Baptiste though we did see Lionhearts dislodge something fairly similar to this just now so let's see if Lionhearts can make this work a little bit better for them. Definitely true. Saints are going to have to go all in together on the dive, but it's more likely that they'll want to build up some of that poke damage and then rely on the blades coming out from Frostbite on the Genji. But of oh. course... <laughs> Cronenberg going to try and tempt them off. <laughs> Not <laughs> it was quite. so close! It was so close! <laughs> Didn't quite that get that That could have been so off. free. Yeah. <laughs> oh, in comes the dive. We're going to see the reflect coming out. Most of that looks to have been sent into Ricks. Not taking a huge amount of damage on the back of it, though. Very slippery customer here for Ospite. Spending a lot of time dealing in damage, but uh, not quite able to find the kills they might like. Big sleep coming out onto Rix. Maybe doesn't matter quite so much. Yes, we do get a dislodge at the end, but at this point, Lionhearts have won the team fight, so it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, it means obviously they're going to have to spend some time getting back into that original position, but I really like the Saints. They did all go for it. Sometimes you see teams that try to run this oh. dive onto a bunker. That was a bit nasty, but you see teams that try to run this dive onto this bunker and they don't all commit at the same time, and that's something the Saints have done actually very well. Yeah, man, I love this positioning out from Kai here. It's an angle people are not expecting to have to deal with the soldier from, and he's able to just put in so much damage to help confirm these kills, but that is a big one. But Magic Valve does find Rix, of course, having not taken support, but down, rezzed right back up and into the fight, able to get Mir on the way out. But Saints have set up a win condition here, and they're very close to having it on board. Very true. They are so close to that blade. Also, bear in mind, they, uh, they, I believe Magic Marv does have... Okay, no, never mind. I thought he had the uh, self-destruct, which he could have thrown straight in. But Cronenberg with the EMP is obviously very important, and that will provide that setup. He'll throw in the translocator. Here we go. Oh, they're going for it, but a self-destruct coming in as well. Beautiful placement from Asbada. Takes down two, and it means that there's not really enough follow-up damage there. Frostbite did use the Dragon Blade, but got taken down. Lionhearts are having to retreat back towards the point to buy themselves a little bit of space, a little bit of time to heal up and recontest. But with Roma Sparta brought back in, that was everything thrown at that bunker by Saints and nothing to show for it. I have been really impressed with Roman Sparta's D.Va plays so far today because not only have his self-destructs actually got quite a lot of value, but his use of the defense matrix has always been very quick and very useful. Oh, well, there's a self-destruct for you right in the middle of things, but imagine Mark <laughs> dying as a result. Cronenberg does get that lamp, but uh, maybe not the most valuable of targets. And now the supercharger is online, but Rick's being bullied by a monkey. And let's have a quick look here on a sleeping car. <laughs> we see Maya get rid of Yanni and we also lose that turbocharger support bot flying around here trying to keep everybody alive. It's a difficult job as a mercy, but they're doing admirably at it as we do see Rick stay alive, getting ready to pour in some more damage. Frostbite very close. Now has the Dragon Blade, but he's no longer in the fight. Is this going to be enough with those final few kills? We see a stick at the end and it's good. It's connecting. It takes out Rick's Cronenberg on the Tracer has done so much to open up this point for their team. And here Kai is just trying to, it's unlikely he's actually going to be able to stall this out, but it of course brings down that time bank, which puts Lionhearts in a much uh, better position as Saints start to move over onto the next point. So it actually takes them a little bit longer until they finally manage to take all of those points there. But yeah, I was I was kind of thinking, I didn't know if Frostbite was going to get that um, blade in time. And of course, as you say, he did. He went down, so he wasn't able to use it. But he did get a really key deflect at the end there. And it just meant the Lionhearts were able to be brought down, um, you know, fairly swiftly by the end. But they did put up a really robust defense for a while. But here's the blade. Oh, here's the blade and the Nana Boost as well going in. Takes down the lamp. Now in a position to take out the rest of Lionhearts who are banking on that lamp to buy them a bit of safety. Saints now 
fully in possession of the point, but mm -hmm. a Diva Bomb self-destruct coming out. Rumor Spider doesn't find anybody. Saints have to back off from the point in order to make room to not get taken out by that, but they are still in a great position here. Hazard has the Pamorage ready to go, is looking to try and spawn trap, but unfortunately did not suspect the Wrecking Ball to be coming out. Doesn't matter because Cronenberg is going to help equalize things a little bit with another well-placed pulse bomb. Support bot and Rick's going down, and a beautiful set play coming out from Saints. Sees them get that 97.8% progress they needed to win this out and go. 2-0 in the series. And that was a very good example of momentum <laughs> at the <laughs> end there. Pretty much Saints, they had so much left over from the last fight, which it was sort of a blessing in disguise that they got killed, uh, you know, a couple of their members got killed off at the end there because it meant they had all these things ready for the next fight. Um, whereas Lionhearts didn't because they'd used all of their resources. So their defense didn't really have, it was a little bit like, you know, wet cardboard going up <laughs> against the, going up against that Dragon Blade there. And, you know, Saints able to pretty much just use everything, clean the fight up very quickly. Roman Sparta tried with the self-destruct, but it was a little bit too high. It wasn't really going to get that much anyway. Even if you brought down a couple of members, the the sort of trickling nature of uh, how Lionhearts would have come back in, it, I just don't think it would have been enough to save them. So, yeah, it was really a, you know, momentous. <laughs> get it? Because it's like momentum. Uh, defense. Yeah. No, not defense. Attack. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it did look actually like a much better point a defense from Lionhearts than we saw yeah. coming out from Saints. Uh, yeah. they, they took them down to, I think, 40, 40 seconds. You know, yeah. a couple of aborted attempts at alt combos before they finally managed to brute force it out. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a shame that they weren't quite able to hold on, but coming in with the Nano Boosted Dragon Blade straight off is what can you really do to defend it? You know, Diva can't eat that. The lamp goes down with one swipe from the Dragon Blade with a nano boost. So, yeah, it, it's yeah. unfortunate. But, again, going back to talking about these teams knowing what their win condition is and knowing what the counters are, uh, Saints, they went, okay, look, we're going to put all our eggs in of this um, nano boosted Dragon Blade shaped basket and just hope for the best. And, you know, it, it worked. All the eggs got there safely. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the reason why the point A defense was really good for Lion Hearts is because they only um, you know, they only had to put their resources into the Bastion. They didn't have to worry about the second DPS. So there wasn't kind of the confusion in the splitting of resources and trying to time it correctly because the, the people who were relying on those resources were all very close together. And of course, using the immortality field from the Batiste, you don't have to think too much about it. You just kind of use it. Of course, like there is timing and things like that that come into it. But the point is, is everybody benefits from it in one place and the Bastion is that primary interest. And they didn't really have to worry about Kai. And so it meant, as I say, there wasn't like the kind of splitting of attention, uh, which is something that Saints have been a lot better at because their supports have just been better at monitoring mm. what's been going on. But yeah, uh, the you're right. The Nano Booster Dragon Blade, um, it did become too much because once you managed to get it in that little uh, that little nook of in the, the right part of the cooldowns of the defending team, then you're going to be able to get a lot of value out of that dragon blade out of that decision and they're not going to have anything to deal with it and that's that's just basically what happened well it's it's the problem with the bunker isn't it like the bunker works when you have everybody in this one incredibly defensible position yeah but that puts you in the range where all again has to do is stand on the spot and turn around to like you know take out everybody on the team if you're playing against a much more distributed team if you're playing against winstons and divas and people that can fly um it's much harder to get value out of it and so yeah you know, it, it, it's almost like a direct counter as soon as you see that and as soon as you see them get a decent amount of success with it you kind of want to change off and make it hard for that to work that that's why you frequently see the genji and a sombra go up against this because they all work so well together the emp really sets up that dive and because the bunker really relies on all of those abilities that make them so defensive once the emp has gone off and they no longer have those uh you know at their um you know leisure then they they can't they can't really just use them so um that's when you know the dive can go in and actually do its thing and of course because of the dash resets that you get off the back of a dragon blade as you say everybody's very up close together so they all kind of are just right there and, and served up on a platter um and of course, you know, depending if you have, you know, some people that are outside that area of effect of the MP EMP, like we often say a Lucio, you look for excuse me, you'd look for um, because of the sound barrier or something like that, then maybe you can provide that kind of support. And uh, if you can get like, I don't know, a sleep onto the Genji or uh, a stun onto the Genji, depending on who you're running in your composition. But really, you are right. It, it just sets up a really good stage for the Dragonblade to kind of 
bring down everything that is preventing you from getting to the point in the first place. Yeah, and at that point, it kind of becomes about, do we have someone that has the mechanical skill to land that sleep or that stun? Yeah. Has our Lucio stayed in a sensible place where they can throw in that sound barrier? <laughs> and in the chaos of a team fight, particularly in Bunker, where you're dealing with all these different threats at different angles, it can be really hard to make that. So it's it's understandable that the Bunker fell apart on the, on, on that last attack. Yeah. Um, but still, this is best of five. So, if we're going to get a reverse sweep, this is where it's going to start to happen. Let's not rule it out yet. Lionhearts have been very strong this season, and I think so far in the maps we've seen, they've put up a put up a very good fight. But uh, unfortunately, we are going to take a short break while our players get some uh, some air and some water. We're going to be getting back in just a few minutes. Don't go too far.
Welcome back, everybody. Told you we wouldn't be gone for too long. Uh, just had some uh, some slight player troubles there with one of our players reportedly not being able to feel their arms. Uh, <laughs> having ascertained that the player can now laugh. feel their arms and that arms are attached across the arena space, <laughs> we're happy to continue with tonight's games. Just to reassure you that we are concerned about our player welfare here. <laughs> Uh, don't trust Phil to be a doctor. He'll just tell all of your medical problems to everyone, apparently. I didn't name names. I've maintained doctor-patient confidentiality. Oh, right. Okay. Sure. Well, I mean... I don't know. We're going Maybe. to Eichenwald next. Yeah. Let's leave okay, we're going to Eichenwald. Okay. See, this is where I was kind of like the next half of the series because Eichenwald, well, not just Eichenwald, but a Hybrid and Escort are obviously very different game types to the first two that we play. So even though currently it's a 202 Saints, there's still that chance that, of course, things can kind of turn around depending on uh, where the strengths of these mm. teams lie. Um, now, that's obviously not, of course, to say that that will happen. And so far, strengths have been showing a lot strength saints have been showing a lot of strength um and it really looks like that they have improved upon things that we have noted previously to be weaknesses of theirs so i think that going into these next maps they're likely to still be continuing mm -hmm. on that trend because it's it's likely that they've scrimmed they've vod reviewed they've practiced these things uh but of course i'm very interested to see because they they haven't Ready been playing anything really kind of goatsy at all they're very prepared for this next meta and so that means that we should be seeing some different things come out from them in fact yeah. gonna be starting off on the defense and actually looking like they're going to be running this farah mccree yeah expect to see a lot of this in your games coming up when 222 finally <laughs> hits hear that uh mccree practicing his shots over there in the background as we slowly pan through the house and uh oh look there are our players the interesting thing is mccree is obviously quite anti-dive and lionhearts right now don't look like they're going to be coming out on a dive type composition he can work as a sort of shield break but i wouldn't be surprised if lionhearts kind of switch things up we'll see looking like they are going to be starting out on this kind of may goats sort of deal with the Anna as well but with Frostbite raining in those rockets through that choke point yeah. it's going to be quite difficult I think it looks like they're, they're maybe going to be going in and, and changing some things out coming out on a D.Va is that the only change they're making though just with the D.Va looks like it I mean she can swallow up the rockets she'll really be in charge of uh, harassing that Farrah and protecting the team from those projectiles but it does put a lot of pressure straight onto Roman Sputter. Yeah, in fact, actually beautiful placement there of the uh, defense matrix means that Frostbite has maybe not got the charge you'd like to see already for a fire that's free firing into an open team on the ground like that. Although, I've said that, 50% of the autumn climbing already and a big nade coming in for support but Rick's taken down, beam claws down to already. Yeah, gets the equalizer taken down. Links, Cronenberg, Fine and Kai. This DPS comp starting to work out for the Saints as we lose support bot. There's the DMEC and expect maybe a little bit of a stagger onto the remaining couple of members of, uh, of Lionhearts. Although, uh, maybe not able to stagger Yanni in the way they would like. Lost <laughs> Cronenberg there. Well, we saw Ricks. He was trying to use that whip shot to actually stun Frostbite out. But we also saw Ricks actually uh, kind of be forced to use the shield bash to try and escape into one of the side rooms because of the threat of those rockets. And this is one of the things that you also have to think about when deciding these heroes that you're playing is can you draw out those resources from the enemy team? It's not just about killing them. But so far, Saints have been combining the anti-nade with the Pharah rockets very well. Yeah, well, that's one already. That's the whole hog offline. Not a huge amount of value point, but a beautiful hook to follow up there. Knocks Kai completely out of the picture. Out of the freezer and into the frying pan for Kai on the May. Frostbite with the follow-up still has the barrage ready to go. And running the uh, Orisa on the attack with that static shield, it could potentially make it a lot easier to kind of jump in behind that shield and lay in the barrage now of course kai sitting here with the blizzard it's going to be have to be very well placed he wants to get good enough value out of it and of course farah's not necessarily going to be affected oh there we go barrage but nothing out of it ricks with the swap there onto the mccree does find frostbite the freeze comes out from kai but cronenberg once again able to take them down definitely getting the better of that matchup but magic marv still looking for angles manages to get oh, in behind Roman the shield Spider. Roman Spider opening things up for team once again the door creaks open in response to that self-destruct but Frostbite has a couple of explosives of their own and 
take support bot out of the equation, and we do see Mook Magic Marv use the um, use the turbocharger there to wrap things up in that fight. But Bean Claws, I think, use theirs in that fight also. Well, I was going to say something about these traces now, but actually Kai is heading on back into the spawn. Maybe going to change things up. Yeah, okay, going to be going on to the Ash. That's going to be providing a lot more of a threat onto Frostbite. It's going to be pressuring him out a little bit and give him less free reign in the sky. And of course, if he can build up that Bob, then Bob can really take charge of the point and give Lionheart some space to move in. But they don't have any ticks and they're in less than a minute to do so. Oh, well, that's one down already, and it's the main tank. Probably the person you want to lose least in this exchange. Rix now has the high noon, opting to use it. Does find one links down already, so that is two down, but they also lose Roman Sparta's mech as this is happening. And they're down at less than 30 seconds. Big hook there from Hazard takes out support bot. But in the meantime, Frostbite is taken out. Hazard with the whole hog finds and deals with Rix and the barrage finding out from Frostbite. A trade, and maybe not a trade that you're feeling too bad about with Roman Sparta getting rid of Frostbite. And it is Beam Claws alone on the point, but Mabakit Marv coming back in on the Wrecking Ball to try and contest things. It's going to give them a lot less sustain if Lionhearts can get back in to keep this contest going. Roma Sparta once more with a Hail Mary bomb doesn't find anything with it. Is going to survive through that and have the chance to come in and contest on their own. Kai does break line of sight on the hook means that they can actually get in and keep alive. Well for a few seconds longer running before Magic Marv deals with you. Support bot taken out by the swinging power of that Wrecking Ball mech. Cronenberg with yet another tasty bomb dealing with a lot of the threats here. Rick's here trying to keep things going, but Magic Marv with a spin cycle up and running does get taken out by Frostbite and that is going to be a big old full hold by Saints. And there were there was a point there where it kind of looked like Lionheart re had a really good in but it really was indicative of some misuse of their resources because we saw Rix when he was on the McCree yeah he was able to bring down the Pharaoh which is great. Really ideally you should have been able to do that a lot earlier than it was done. But then he actually tried to use the flashbang to stun a Mercy out of the air. Now you shouldn't really need to be using a flashbang to kill a Mercy as a McCree, but what that meant then was when Hazard came at him with the whole hog, he had nothing to defend himself with. He was shooting at Hazard, but he didn't have a flashbang to try and stun him out, so he kind of just was, with his back against the wall, had to take this whole hog and die, and that was the point at which Saint started to actually, you know, come straight back in into the point and take control once again, preventing Lionheart from being able to do anything. So... You know, once again, if Lionhearts want to be able to take this map... They've got to defend at least 97.4%. <laughs> and given what we've seen from Saints so far, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't like to call this either way. I think Lionhearts do have the skills necessary to do this. But I think it depends an awful lot on getting rid of some of the little mistakes that you were just talking about. You know, flashbanging the wrong target and what have you. I, I think some of the really important things that we're going to have to be looking out for in Saints here is, yeah, okay, you have to Sombra the EMP. We've seen how they can use that EMP thus far. But I really want to be looking for the support support ultimates because I think particularly the sound barrier from Mia is going to be the perfect moment for the engage because we've seen so far Saints very good at being sustained and I think that can be when they ideally will be able to push further into Lionhearts because they will succumb to pressure a little bit more than we have <laughs> seen Saints having. Oh, I like this wraparound. <laughs> I do. I always find it quite fun to watch. Yeah. Going to try and get in on the high ground, initiate with the uh, initiate with the power drive. We did see Frostbite taken down, so now the res is offline. Needs to be a little bit more conservative in this fight, and Kai is able to open things up once again with the TNT kill onto Hazard. I think we're going to see Book Magic Marv maybe just. Uh, camp out here for a little while, wait for the team to come back. Yeah, he's in a spot here where no one really kind of knows he's there, so he can just wait for the team to come back. But of course, that does mean that it is a waiting game. He sort of has to sit there and he's not gaining any ultimate charge in the meantime. So he's not getting any close to that minefield other than the passive charge. Crouching Mia, tiger, hidden wrecking ball. <laughs> Mia's actually switching over to the Anna there. Yeah. So Going out all out for the offense. Well, there's the initiation. Power drive disrupts the bunker comp and a hack in on the back line. Not quite, but very close. Able to find the kill. Onto Yanni there. Cronenberg opening things up. Yanni going down. It's two down. Three down already for the Lionhearts. Saints have just got a small amount left to do here. And the melee kill coming in from Frostbite. Just to, I guess, rub salt into the wound. That was 
a blistering attack round from Saints. This is so cursed. <laughs> and then the melee Farah. Yeah. Oh, we have got a little bit more of a contest coming in. Yanni able to get in and take Lynx out of the bag. But this is very much a Hail Mary <laughs> and a barrage just because sometimes it's nice to have fireworks at the end of a match. And that was a really, I have to admit, it was, it was almost embarrassingly short round. Mm. How's, that, uh, how's that Lionheart's jersey working out for you? You know what? I love it. I'm, I actually, I'm still really enjoying this team. I mm. think basically what's happened is Saints have some really experienced players on the team and they've just knuckled down and said, right, okay, we're going to win this season and we're going to put in all the work to ensure that we are the best team and that we can play at, you know, a, a really high level because, you know, some of these teams, they'll be tier four and there are some tier three players in these teams, but, you know, this looks like a team that said we want to be a tier three team. Mm. We want to actually be playing at that level. And Lionhearts, they've been riding off of the coattails of their own talent, I think, thus far, and they've been been doing very well but have they necessarily been really looking at the nitty gritty or have they been relying on the fact that they've actually been doing very very well against the teams that they've been playing against well it kind of looks like that that's what it has been when you compare these two teams right now because as I said like resource management it's just not quite as good and I think one thing Reinhardt's really struggling with is switching to the right heroes at the right times or just the target prioritization because They'll switch to a hit scan to go against the Pharah, but a little bit late in the round, or uh, you'll you'll kind of see the 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 hit scan like trying to focus on somebody else instead of focusing on the Pharah, and so Frostbite's getting all of this free damage and getting closer to the barrage, and they're just small mistakes that can be very easily fixed, but they require that kind of cognizance. Yeah, and of course, every small mistake like that, it's not linear; it's it's exponential. It's every every small mistake stacks up, and it makes the previous small mistakes that much worse. Yeah. And unfortunately, when you are against a team like Saints who have this pedigree and this calibre, yes, they've not got all of the tools that were originally there in the, in the toolbox that we opened mm -hmm. to see them go to semi-finals or go, go to the finals in the last splits. Um, they still have a lot of experience. You know, Mag Magic Marv, I think, is probably doing a lot there to bring the existing experience through to Saints and it just means that Lionheart have that gap to cross and they've just not done it yet. But when you consider that they've come from relative obscurity with how they were doing in previous splits, I think this is a team that we can look oh, forward yeah. to seeing a lot more from in coming seasons. I mean, I definitely think like one of the really encouraging things about what we are seeing from uh, Lionhearts is that because they're kind of silly and small mistakes rather than really fundamental uh, skill-based mistakes, it means that there's actually such a ceiling for them mm. to grow and that they can, they can really put so much work into you know coming into themselves you know they're coming into this season we didn't really know what to expect from them it's mostly a new team and so they probably didn't know what to expect from themselves and they've come against these other teams they kind of have a little bit more of a grasp of what the skill they're going up against is and now they can come away from this season regardless of where they place and actually be like okay here are the things that we learn by playing against these other high tier teams and here's what we can work on to be in that finals next year uh, you know next season and of course you know they could be in the finals this season but we just <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh, it's still all to play for we we've, we've all made some predictions that maybe we're starting to rethink on the back of some of these <laughs> matches but don't go anywhere because we are about to take a very short break but we'll be going to be right back with our second game of this evening and hopefully it's going to be every bit as enjoyable as this one we've just had but don't go too far
Welcome back, everybody. Here we are, the second game of the evening. It's going to be Pirates versus Steelers. Gio, what have we got to look forward to? Uh, probably something really good. Pirates is one of those teams that they kind of gained, uh, again, some new players this season, including one of the star players from the last championship team, Spartans. It was Padjack. He's moved on over, and so far throughout the group stage, they have just proved that they have such a good fundamental understanding of of whoever it is they're playing against they've kind of ran ru they've run rings around you know their opposing teams they have very very good um very very good coordination and they're a very opportunistic team and Steelers they are a team who we weren't sure if they were going to make it into uh, we've kind of underestimated them a little bit you know when we've been seeing them but they've been playing very well they've got such strong DPS uh players like Quantum you know this is a name that constantly gets brought up whenever we see Steelers because they really are a very, very strong team from that respect. So... Okay. We just got to watch out. Every, every time this happens, I get a message from. Qu Firstly, we get messages from Quantum to say thank you for casting. Oh, which, Quantum which is so love. wholesome, we by love. the way. But I also get messages every time I miss Quantum shield bashing somebody out of an EMP. So <laughs> just watch out for it happening because if I don't call it, then I've at least at drawn least attention to it. At least people know. Exactly. Watch out for the shield bashes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah no these are these are both um teams that have become very fun for us to watch you know kind of more than anything that not only are they very good but they're very fun you can actually see the rosters up there on your screen right now yeah, and of course worth pointing out brute we've mentioned before uh, we have. hasn't quite made it through into the final seven man roster for team uk but was in the top 12 so a very scary player here yeah so he is literally a sub on our international you know representing team in the world cup don't forget the uk they came fourth in the overwatch world cup last year so it's certainly not a team to be laughed at and brute he's right there up on it and so not only will have be he been playing with these guys but he also will have been scrimming with team uk receiving coaching from coach hayes who coaches the philadelphia fusion uh and basically just have a lot of things to add to this team and of course as i kind of said he's not the only one everybody on this team seems to be really really uh really strong and just really strong understanding and i think that's what i find so much fun to watch with the pirates is they just always seem to have like such a good idea of what's going on yeah. so they have Steelers, of course, no slouches. They only lost uh, one match in their group stage, and they actually went out to the team we just saw go out in the previous round. They went uh, two and three against Lionhearts. Let's see if they can uh, improve on that earlier success in this match. So already today, we have seen the Maze be brought out on Mecha Base. So we're going to be seeing it once again, Patchak versus Ceruleus. And of course, the Annas as well it can provide those sleeps, the anti-nades. Add some damage as well. Yeah, so this is a, it's a mirror matchup pretty much. Gonna see who can manage the better. And that's definitely a good wall, but a huge displace coming out there. Stops Elroy connecting on that charge and getting the kill they were looking for. But definitely in range to start piling in some damage. Pirates are having to back off here as Steelers taking the more aggressive route, getting into position to deal some of that incoming damage. And a very good rotation coming up from Steelers, ready to match the Pirates as they come back in. But the point has now unlocked. Mm -hmm. Expect to see the players start to transition. Oh, a beautiful wall there however it doesn't catch out Elroy who is able to get in and protect lithium from getting frozen that is going to be the first freeze wall is blocking out pirates Steelers in a very good position here to get in and cap to the point but they've lost quantum they've lost that defensive setup with the brig and on the back of that pirates able to capitalize in a huge way although a lot of damage dealt into pirates it's sadly not enough brute there doing a huge amount of lifting for the pirates this is one of those things where you have these kind of goat centric compositions once you, you you lose one of the links in that chain then pretty much the entire thing is going to fall apart and actually elroy was surviving very well in those fights because lithium was very good with his bubble timing if you keep an eye on that and see when and where he uses them it's always at the right moment as well as the repair pack coming in from quantum but here they go ready to come back in they have received that anti-nade so that's going to put pirates a little bit more time but now being walled out and the ground. Whoa, everybody presses Q. We've got a blizzard and a wow. Wow, on the back of that blizzard, Pirates coming in, getting a huge amount of work done. Dapper getting two. Yes, we do see Steelers get one with disclosure falling down in the exchange. But really, Pirates completely dominated that fight. And they're coming out of it with a Earth Shatter 
and a um, and a sand barrier still to show for it. We're actually seeing Ruggy Ram now switching over onto the Zenyatta. So instead of opting for that Ana, they're going to be going for the Discord Orb as well as the Shield Break, of course, that you can have from the damage that he deals. 240 damage for a full volley. So it's certainly a decent amount. But again, this brawl happening around oh. here. Oh, that Earth Shatter! Earth Shatter wasn't expecting the wall to come up underneath, effectively wasting that ultimate. And a big freeze there onto FAQ takes them down. And we know what happens now. You lose the main tank. There's a pretty good chance you're going to lose the fight. Karudi is not quite able to get the isolation they wanted with that wall. And <laughs> Pachak doing a great job. Beautifully timed on the ice block. Stop that charge connecting. Unfortunately, not able to survive the follow-up damage from Quantum there. Getting the better of Pachak in that exchange. Steelers look like they may be coming out of this with control of the point as Elroy starts to use that hammer to sweep up what is left of the pirates. Something that's really working on Steelers' side here is how uh, intuitive Cerulius is with when he should be using those walls underneath the enemy members of pirates just as they're about to use their abilities be it that earth shadow that we saw or other things that could come out and especially when you have these small choke points here it's the perfect time to use them ruggy ram's got the transcendence ready to go in case his team gets in trouble here yeah does get displaced gonna struggle to get in with that on time not even gonna need it because steelers able to clear that right the way up with uh, with the help of the huge Graviton Surge out from Lithium. There's so many assists there in the kill feed which just go to show how much coordination is here on the side of Steelers. Now Brute, he's just about to get his Graviton Surge and as I kind of mentioned before, coming in through these small choke points, perfect time to use it. He just needs the follow up from the team. Got to be sure they don't lose anyone yet. Here we go. Yeah, but Geo, if you want to come into a fight, you got to come in with all six members ready to go. However, FAQ might be making up for that initial misplacement there, although the freeze and just their vulnerability means that even having got a couple of kills on the back of having lost patch check, they are going to lose that fight. It's true, so Steelers, they're still going to be ticking up this percentage. Not quite at the point the Pirates were at when they lost control. So there's still a little bit of time. Expect to see Disclosure invest his Nano, potentially onto FAQ to give him all the more power that he can use to push in. You can hear the Blizzard come out now. Yeah, it's bought them a lot of space. And of course, there are no support ults there to keep any of the Steelers alive. So we are going to lose aggression very early on in the fight, which means this there's is a 5v6. Nano. nano boost comes out as well, but a freeze hits Elroy, who has the shadow ready to go it puts two on the ground it gets patch check and it gets dapper dapper the follow-up isn't there so dapper is going to have that sound barrier online might not even need it as the pirates once again rubber band right back into the fight and knock Steelers clear getting closer and closer to that 100 percent now so there's only Ooh. one more chance and aggression coming in here on his own he just wanted to touch the point and kind of stall it out to let the rest of his team come yeah. in but he's getting stunned straight out it's going to make it even harder because now Steelers are lacking that healer yeah, but of course, you've got to keep it. You've got to get overtime ticking up. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. But the sound barrier out and the Graviton Surge as well. Lithium does manage to get... F sorry, Quantum gets FAQ out of the fight. And we know again how impactful losing your main tank is. But Steelers already down in the fight coming into that particular change. And there's the Graviton Surge coming out. And a Snow Globe. The Blizzard in over the top means that Steelers are going to come in and start getting these kills. Maybe they can do this. Maybe they can flip this over. That Discord orb from Ruggie Ram doing so much to keep this alive. We We've got FAQ coming back in on the Wrecking Ball, and the point has flipped back over. Steelers have a chance to take this. It was evident the Pirates weren't dealing in enough damage to Steelers because the uh, armor that was from the rally was just remaining on those members, and now we're heading into overtime, and things are brawling out, and Pirates have kind of trickled in, and it's looking like they're going to lose this point, Phil. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, th that's it, losing the point. We've got the May on the point. Patch check there, wants to keep this alive. Just that little bit longer. It's not going to be enough, though, because people are going to be trickling in the longer overtime goes on the slower that respawn is and that is gonna be Steelers taking that first point 99 to 99 though it Close. is not a bad way to start off the series here with Pirates and Steelers and I think one thing that is so enjoyable about both of these teams is that we really see just how well the timing is with them using their resources I mentioned the the repair pack and of course the projected barrier at the start I, I also ended up mentioning the wall as well and it's 
in those moments where you have these really well-matched teams that you do get in these situations where it becomes so down to the wire. But now, moving into downtown, two very different compositions here. It looks like we're going to be going for that, uh, you know, EMP Nanoblade that we've seen a number of times here on the side of Steelers, whereas Pirates, they're going to be following Brute up in the sky. And now we know him as a bit of a diva player in off-tank, but we have it seen his Pharah be before. We've seen his Pharah before, and what it is there, pretty though? lethal. <laughs> How did that battle work out? Quantum should not be getting the better of Patchak in that situation. Dapper not looking to want to invest uh, enough time to get in oh, and no. res. And there's the hack coming through onto Brew, already in trouble. Rugging Ram staying in the back line, able to deal in damage and healing in equal amounts. This is looking good for the Steelers, a really good opening start. They've managed to kind of take the right people out by surprise and they know that Brute is not someone to be messed with yeah. and they're really going for him. They're, they're kind of allowing Lithium to target him, bring him out of the sky and that allows the rest of the team to sort of do what they must. Cerulius really chasing after uh, the Rocket Queen there with the D.Va and of course the, the Defense Matrix can just swallow that damage up whole. Yeah, Storm Baller play we've not really said an awful lot about. Does get an opening kill. Elroy went down in that exchange and that hack seems to be exclusively reserved yeah. just for Brew. He's going to be getting so frustrated, but still at 70% of the ultimate and charging, and a nice minefield from FAQ hits pretty much all of the point, and Brew with the follow-up rocket is going to get rid of aggression. Padshak now playing on the low ground. They know. They know Lithium is there. They want to go mano a mano with Lithium. Has to back out of it. Can't afford to stay in that position. Pirates look like they're about to take this point, though. Lithium trying to get those last few little slivers of uh, ult charge and they're very close to having it. Yeah, really once Brute was able to kind of take a little bit more space there. Because once Brute he, wasn't hacked for a charge. Yes, he didn't have that pressure coming coming on to, to him quite as much. But Steelers, you know, they're very close to actually having what they require to be able to bring out this blade. Now, of course, Pirates will be expecting them to be using those support ultimates or at least one of them because they do have those at their disposal. So potentially putting it onto Brute to give him more power and withstand what Steelers this could be putting onto him. There we go. Nana boosted barrage. A lot of that no! goes into the rocket, but they survive thanks in part to the damage mitigation. And Karulius on the DMAC falls onto the train tracks. It's a modern tragedy. Yeah, whenever I see a Farah barrage into a defense matrix, I always think back to that clip from the World Cup last year where Fletter had this pixel perfect reaction to throwing his barrage away from a diva, waiting for the defense majors to go down and bringing it back. And it was absolutely amazing. And I, I just always think, why are you continuing the barrage into the defense matrix? At least turn around, look for another target, allow the diva to kind of fall off, and then you can go back. You know, so it doesn't what, last forever. What we're saying here, Brute, is uh, beef letter EMP <laughs> on the back of a self-destruct. Self-destruct, fine, Storm Bolt. We also lose Dapper in that exchange. Pirates are still in control. They have the majority so far of... Um, percentage captured FAQ getting very close to having the mines but a lot of his team down already has it ready to go FAQ wow. with the huge swing around this <laughs> lodge is three doesn't even need the minefield just with that incredibly quick cooldown getting those kills Steelers have got to feel so bad about that maneuver yeah, I, there's no other way to put it the fact that he just was able to kind of fly them all into that train <laughs> It's a very precarious place to be positioned, but Steelers, I mean, they shouldn't be too concerned. They've been saving up these ultimates, but they've only got one fight left because we're so close to 100%. They need to use them, otherwise it was just all a waste. Yeah, well, they swapped Lithium over on to the Widowmaker to try and pressure Panchak. Out comes Dragonblade. It finds one in Disclosure, looking to get close and close the distance, but the Adaptive Shield coming out there for FAQ means they are going to survive that, so only one out of the Dragonblade in Disclosure gets rezzed back up into it, meaning that was not a particularly great investment of ultimates. We also see Quantum die on the back of that thanks to Stormball currently playing the other um, Shimada brother and another barrage out from Brute looks slightly more successful wow. this time although taking themselves out with it as well does get the DMEC Padjack able to get better of Karulius on the back of the DMEC from Brute FAQ throws the minefield in looking to maintain control of the point but there is a turbocharged monkey but not anymore and uh, this is <laughs> well pretty unfortunate we just got to get that last second kill onto the Widowmaker not quite able to find it sound barrier coming in from aggression wants to do everything they can to keep their team in this fight. The power driver is there to take Lithium out, but Lithium has gotten rid of Stormball, and it may just be FAQ on the point, but we are seeing speedy heroes coming out now with Brute swapping over onto the Tracer. They are going to lose the point here, and Pirates maybe want to back out and come at this another time. And yeah, there's still time. 
Lithium currently the only person who has an all popping it just now. We're getting closer and closer, but Pachak's just desperately trying to build up this EMP. I don't think he's going to get it in time, but maybe he can get some key hacks. Uh, FAQ has the minefield. Once again, I think it's the third that fight. Wasn't able to find the connect with the power driver to initiate some of that incoming damage. Big hack comes out onto Quantum, however, who's coming back just to help keep numbers up for the team. Karulius there with the focus. Gets rid of FAQ also. No ultimates. Very few players left to go for the Pirates. This may take over to be another point for the Steelers. FAQ finds one with the minefield. Passive kill there. We can't exactly put that down to a skill shot, but Quantum able to get in and take out Disclosure. Stormball wants to do everything they can to get the kill there. Not able to find it with the melee. FAQ coming in, not able to connect in time for the overtime ticket not to go down, and that is Steelers taking us to 2-0 on Busan. And really at the end there, it just came down to kind of that brawl after everyone had invested their ultimates. It was just one big fight. We saw a number of people change onto different heroes, try and build up their resources and their ultimates. And it was kind of just, okay, we've got to fight really close because we want to build this stuff up really quickly. That was absolutely brutal, but also hilarious. It's disgusting. But the thing that I, the, kind of the major mistake that I think I saw come out from Steelers, even though they were, you know, they did end up being the team that did won, uh, did win that point. So obviously I can't put them down too much, but they could have taken that a lot faster. The issue was, is they ended up using their nano boost before the Genji had his blade. So what that meant was then Genji Quantum was kind of sitting there with this blade um, and not using it. And you don't want to be in that situation where the, the opposing team is building up more and more, ch uh, more and more percentage and you're sitting there with these resources not using them because then you're waiting for your Ana to build that up again. And by the time everyone had everything together was in that last fight territory. And of course, it didn't get the value that they wanted it to. And that pushed everybody into this big brawl situation when really that could have been avoided if they'd have just ensured that they saved those ultimates for each other to just have a very clean fight finish. So what have we learned here? You can win a map and Geo is still not going to be happy with you. Oh, but don't I, read I, that. I, I, I think, I think the, maybe the point that's worth pointing out is um, our predictions for what the finals might look like may include pirates and so to see Steelers take the first map off them what we would really like is just let's see let's see a bit more polish on some of those moves and see if we can make this a really competitive fight to get to finals I mean it certainly has been competitive so far and I think there have been a number of times where Steelers have of course gotten the better of pirates like for sure I just think that was one thing that they could have done better to really get that so much faster because you don't want to be in that position where the only reason you win is because you kind of happened to mm. and that's what happens when you're in those neutral brawls that are in overtime it's it's not the same as having a, a very distinct strategy that you all act upon and very cleanly take a fight yeah, well, this is likely to be a slightly more well-structured set of team fights as we move over onto our assault, our assault map. It's going to be Hanamura today, 2CP, capturing first one point, then the other. Looks like it's going to be Steelers starting on defense. And we're going to be going for kind of similar what we saw Lionhearts running with the Bunker, of course, going for the Batiste. But instead of running a Bastion, it looks like they're actually going to be having a Junkrat now. Of course, his Frag Grenades can actually provide quite a bit of damage. And one thing that he really adds is he sort of prevents that dive because uh, Junkrat has Total Mayhem, which is his passive ability. That means when he dies, he leaves behind a load of his Frag Grenades and uh, the damage will deal on to you if you're hanging around. So if you you have say a Winston or a Genji jump onto the team then that's going to deal so much damage that it does potentially pose a threat to their life so I really like the pirates they're actually going for the sombra Ooh, hand zone that ain't good you're right it's not <laughs> uh, lithium lost very early in the fight looks like not a position that aggression can actually get in and get the res off on well, no, no, they've managed to do it. Aggression coming in does find Lithium with the res. Panshack now in the back line, looking for angles, looking for hacks, providing a lot of intel to the rest of the team. It's a big anti nade though, coming out, hits Ruggie Ram and it hits uh, Karelius and Quantum. Also, Steelers already have to back onto the point, and that's not classically a great sign. If you're trying to run this sort of bunker composition, being forced back onto the point straight off is not great because now you don't have the high ground, and now there are a lot more ways that people can come and attack you. FAQ. 
looking to put that uh, Tesla cannon onto as many targets as possible, but with a bit of help from the Amp Matrix, Quantum is going to get one and the D-Mech there also, Patchak managing to burn down the lamp, but in the meantime, Brute's getting a melee kill onto his opposite number of Kareli's Patchak at 98% of the ultimate already in just over a minute on the team fight. Here comes the tire, finds Dapper at the end of it, so it looked like a great team fight there for Pirates, but they weren't quite able to turn that into a win. No, and I think they were oh. all kind of dealing with different things. Patchak doing this EMP, just sort of out here on his own. I suppose FAQ is there to follow things up. Yeah, Brute, Stormbolt also getting in on the action thanks to that EMP. Clearly, they knew more about the positioning than we did. <laughs> down, goes, uh, down goes the Immortality Field. Rookie Round falling pretty straight after. A big sleep there on to uh, Brute. Brute has the self-destruct ready to go. But we've lost main tank. Elroy is down. Carulium to Carulius down. Dapper getting the kill onto the pilot form of Carulius. They're able to get the res back up onto this closure. So the Pirates going to be coming in with a full complement of players as they head on to point B. I think Pirates really knock Steelers off kilter a little bit because when Steelers backed out, they actually had the immortality field baited out uh, from them. So that meant that they can use it exactly when they wanted to. And so Pirates were able to kind of get in there at the right time where that wasn't really available to Steelers. Of course, they have change things up now going to be running uh, the Sombra as well in comes the self-destruct yeah self-destruct not able to find anything but we do see the d come out FAQ will have the primal rage ready to go but they've got the pilot form of the diva trapped in this little room goodbye Karudius but being chased themselves FAQ will have the primal rage hoping they don't need to pop it here pirates getting two already with quantum down Steelers have made a wholesale bunch of swaps means that there's not a lot of EM not a lot of ults there for them to actually work with and brute and one of his signature heroes here bullying what is left of Steelers back into spawn? FAQ with the Primal Rage able to survive a lot of that damage coming in from the Diva self destruct And now this for the Steelers is all about burning time off the clock, but it's going to be very hard to do when so many of you are EMP'd. And sometimes when I see Patchak do these EMPs, I really get concerned because they look so opportunistic. But in this case, he's always had those members to back him up. And of course, I don't doubt that he knows that for himself. But sometimes you just think, oh my god, is this the right time? But so far, it has been. Oh, dueling Nana Boost and a Dragon on the field. Nana Boost going on to two tanks there. And it looks like Pirates got the better of the exchange. Quantum going down. Elroy looking to get back in and keep this going as long as possible, but slept right out of it. And that is going to be a very quick cap time for Pirates. No, it was pretty good and I think they did obviously revolve around the Sombra and they were they were very decisive with their dive as well you know I mentioned how Steelers were kind of running something that really dissuaded a dive but Pirates went for it and actually Steelers I think their backing out was I don't know, I want to say uncharacteristic. It's not, after seeing the first map, not what I necessarily would have expected them to do. Um, so that really kind of gave them that in. And then, of course, off the back of that, they kept building up these EMPs and they were having this big fight in the middle of the second point. And that, uh, that just kind of gave them a really good platform to win out those fights. So, of course, Steelers, as they come in for their attack, they're probably going to be quite aware of that and what has been happening. So, Pyra's going to run something very similar. Not going to be going for uh, <laughs> for the Batiste or the Junkrat. Instead, running Torbjorn as well as, of course, Hanzo and Ash. So they will have really good coverage of this choke point. But Some if Quantum if Quantum stays on this Symmetra... Which they've done it, before. They have done before very successfully. It doesn't matter if Pirates have good control of this choke point because they'll just completely bypass it. Yeah. Well, we've got to assume that Pirates have seen this spot from Steelers because it was it was made so much of because uh, it was such a, such a fun play of the game to watch. So let's see if they're prepared to deal with this. It doesn't look like they're particularly expecting a Symmetra setup because they're trying to contest this pathway in the middle here, the courtyard, but that's just going to be completely bypassed. Give the shield. They would have seen the Symmetra. Teleporter the on. Teleporter. That's going to be almost all of them through. Turrets are now set up. Turret on an off angle. A lot of pressure coming in onto that Reinhardt shield. But they're running double shield. Doesn't matter quite so much. Steelers, shock and awe tactics indeed. They lose Karulius, but Quantum pretty much passively at this point, just with the uh, the Symmetra turrets, take that in just a stupidly quick time. Six minutes, 20 seconds left in the bank. There wasn't even a fight to cast. You know what's actually scary is if this were the old... 
uh, the old assault rules, and that would be seven minutes, yeah. 20, that they would then have. Of course, it went down by a minute. So straight away, this next defense is going to be set up on this point. But Steelers starting things off with the Coalescence. Yeah, Kirillis coming in, looking to play some of the spin to win Wrecking Ball. Focusing down Brute, getting very close to getting the D-Mech there, but Padshak already has Bob. Bob on the field doing a lot to discourage this incoming aggression from Steelers. Kirillis opting to take a dive at the end there just to force that hard reset for Steelers. It's not the end of the world. They've got plenty of time. <laughs> time to go get a drink. It's fine. And Pirates, they have these two support ultimates. So they know that they can kind of protect themselves here, but what they're going to be looking to do is really clicking those heads. I mean, specifically Padshak, but both these teams now do have the Genji. Of course, we know that Quantum, very good Genji. We don't want to see the same mistake that we saw on Busan, where they were sort of out of sync with Ruggy Ram's ultimate. But... Storm Ball, so much further ahead. It doesn't have the added benefit of the Nano Boost, though. You're right, nor does he have the he EMP. But if you just go for that right person and you get those three ultimates out of sync, so you prevent the Sombra from being able to build up her ult, for example, then that's going to set Steelers back a little bit. It's going to have to make them be a little bit more ballsy if they then decide to use their ultimates without one of those three members. Yeah, like a milking stool, Steelers' plan of attack here has three legs. Take one of them away, the whole thing falls over, and no milk for anybody. But a little bit of a slow engage here. Steelers looking to stage, and, uh, well, that's going to be Lithium found out, but a good chance towards that ult already, 30% and climbing, not too bad. Yeah, so far Steelers, they're in this situation where they're kind of trying to build some stuff up, but with the dynamite going in, it's going to deal a lot of damage onto them, having to use that shield, yeah. the Bob. Yeah, Bob on the field, Brute with the self-destruct as well, ready to go, Bob, second team fight in a row where Bob has been a huge part of the deterrent for the side of Pirates, who are holding on and getting very close to burning the right amount of time off of the Steelers' attack to uh, take this the distance. Very true. Only about 20 seconds until they're actually matching. Hello Hello. Yeah. Well, we've got two big tank ults and we've also got the uh, Dragon Blade coming out from Storm Ball. Meanwhile, we've almost got that Nana Boost online for Ruggie Ram, but nothing else so far. What you were saying earlier about being out of sync with these ultimates is going to burn more time off the clock for them. Yeah, Ruggie Ram has been building uh, them up. Uh, oh no, Patrick. Oh, Didn't want to do that, but... Uh... <laughs> All that. Quick, stop se <laughs> stop sacking Padshak, you're making him nervous. Oh no. He's going to watch this later and just think, wow. Yeah, FAQ with the Primal Rage up on the high ground, causing confusion, as only a Winston can do in the confusion. We do lose Elroy in the exchange. FAQ coming back in, back to Tesla Cannon, normal health of Winston, looking to try and pressure down. Doesn't get the kill, does get the kill, chases down Ruggie Ram, desperately wanted that. And now, 3 minutes, 15 seconds left on the clock. Steelers, they've got one more piece of the puzzle to get, and they're going to get that in a couple seconds. Yeah, just the passive charge will allow Quantum to reach that Dragon Blade. So they will be able to come in and do this, but Pirates also know that that is going to be the plan. So the question is, are Pirates going to use their Blade first and try and actually bait that out and put Steelers under pressure where they have to use it? Because at that point then, Steelers ha kind of have more to add on to that. They can just sort of pump in the EMP and prevent Pirates from doing all that much. But will preventing Quantum from getting value out of here to be enough for them? Well, look, between Padshak and Brute spending and saying in different places, at least one of them is going to avoid the EMP. That self destruct from Corellia is only able to get Dapper. And with Bob on the field, that's going to be a big equalizer. Quantum, though, coming up clutch already with the Nana Boosted Dragon Blade. We've seen them do this time and time again, but they've got Bob on the field to deal with. And of course, We've still got Padshak up on the high ground and Quantum able to get rid of Stormball. So Steelers now at two ticks captured. It's going to be down to Pirates just to burn off as much time as possible. Disclosure comes in with the Transcendence. It's going to keep everybody alive third. But of course, the anti-nade coming out from Ruggie Ram discounts a lot of the benefit of that. And Karuli is able to get Brute, who was sadly just hanging sort of limply off the edge there with that uh, Wrecking Ball grapple. And this is pretty much a rout now for Pirates. Steelers just looking to get a few strong us out of the way as they move into capping this final point. Ruggie Ram has the ES, the Nano in one more time. Onto Quantum, who has another Dragon Blade, uses the dash reset to find Q to find fact, finds disclosure, gets Stormball as well, looking to get that final kill to complete the set with a bit of help there from Ruggie Ram with the anti nade, takes down the lamp and the lamp's <laughs> lamp's master even. <laughs> That's going to be Steelers completing, but in a much slower time bank. Well, I said the question was, 
Pirates bringing out their Dragon Blade first. Was that going to put pressure on Steelers or was it going to put Pirates in a bad situation? They did it anyway and Steelers were the ones to come out on top. And then Quantum was able to build up another Dragon Blade so quickly after that because things were in such close quarters. So Steelers, yes, they do have less time. They actually have just under half the amount of time that Pirates have for themselves. But maybe that they will... Maybe they'll understand a little bit more that executing these plays faster is going to put them in that better situation. Mm. Maybe it is going to come down to, okay, let's not worry about the fact that all three of us have this. Because, they, okay, they know that Quantum can, can um, you know, perform. They know that he can get value out of what it is he's going to be doing. And so do they really need to take that risk? Because at this point, they don't really have the time necessarily to do that. They are going to be starting off on the attack going... Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Go, okay, they're going to they're gonna be going for the Roadhog instead, actually running a quad tank situation here. So beep, we're going beep. back to Season 1. Slambulance. Season 1 of 2018 Contenders, back when Angry Titans were the ones who popularized the quad tank at the end uh, in their own playoffs. Except they, of course, did not have Hammond then. They're just going to come in, be beefy, have Ruggy Round provide that sustain, and hopefully just force Pirates out. That's been my strategy so far, just coming in and be beefy. I mean, not with Overwatch, <laughs> just in life in general. Steelers coming in, want to get in as quickly as possible. Quantum, going to be uh, an interesting wrinkle in this, providing mobility for the whole team last time, but just for themselves this time. They are going to be coming into Brew on the May, which is probably not where you want to be running a Wrecking Ball if you can really help it. But now, both of those uh, abilities down and out for the May. Padjack in the back, providing those angles of attack. <laughs> God is 6% of the ult and climbing group playing around the bell here, just kind of survive and pile in some of this. Uh, ooh. <laughs> There's a nice attempt there at a wall out on the Reinhardt, and it looks like we're just going to see as much stall as we can manage out from Pirates. Stormball has a dragon ready to go. Are they going to throw it into this fight? Do they want to make that investment, or are they going to keep this? No, they're going to they're going to opt for the death here instead and come in and try and hold on point B instead. The really interesting thing about what Steelers did there is they put a lot of the responsibility onto Quantum. He was essentially behaving as a DPS, and so uh, Lithium was putting in the projected barrier onto Quantum instead of onto Elroy. And generally, you expect the Reinhardt to be the one to receive those uh, resources, but it meant the Pirates were putting a lot of their resources into Elroy, and that kind of gave Quantum free reign to act on what he was doing because the attention was elsewhere but now moving into the next point they only have half a minute to do it very close to this minefield and of course do have the sound barrier to help them along but yeah quantum using the third person view there trying to get a bit of info wants to know exactly where they can put this minefield for the biggest effect gonna come for a wrapper on the side wants to try and displace this bunker oh wasn't oh, able to get the power drive hit the geometry but a blizzard out as well and we've got Patchak coming in on the reaper trying to pile in that damage on the back of the freeze out from brute it's a tried and trusted strategy and it's starting to work out for them stormball comes in piles in the dragon just on top of all the chaos already in existence and that looks very much to me like that's going to be Pirates defending point B. Yeah, very likely. Not going to be able to do anything there. Really, they just didn't have the resources to do it. And especially when you do have that Reaper and as well the May who uh, did have the Blizzard ready. As soon as you go in for those really close fights, you're, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position. Even though there was kind of no way that Padshak was going to be able to get the Death Blossom in that time. The shot, the Hellfire shotguns uh, provide so much damage at that kind of range that it puts Steelers in a very uh, risky position. And actually, it, it's sort of, it's funny because this whole meme of, oh, but Re Reaper, Reaper counters tanks, so why doesn't he <laughs> counter goats? Reaper came, viable. But it came from the fact that Reaper was really good to go against these these death ball compositions. So it's kind of drawing from the history books in that situation. Yeah, yeah especially if you're going to pair him with a May. Like, it, it's already pretty <laughs> pretty hard to miss with the Hellfire shotguns. Yeah. When your target is frozen to the spot, it becomes nearly impossible. <laughs> I mean, I found a way to do it, guys. Don't worry. But these guys are not going to be able to replicate my it's just so good. And modest, too. <laughs> Steelers going to be uh, running a bunker with Quantum on the Torbjorn this time. Where's that turret going, little man? What are you looking for? I 
think if anyone's going to be able to build up the uh, Molten Core in such a short amount of time, it's probably going to be Quantum. Quantum and one has of such a weird hero pool. Well, the thing is, one of the really good things about running Torbjorn on the defense here, especially with a bunker comp, is you can turn around and fire the Molten Core through the windows mm. onto the point. I've seen that happen many a time and really catch teams out. Although it's looking like Steelers are actually positioning themselves a little bit further back. Patrick's going to be doing a bit of scouting. Maybe he'll get an early hack. Because Pirates are running this uh, dive composition, so they're probably expecting to go straight for that high ground, but they're going to be a little bit harder to dive and require a little bit more commitment. Yeah, and here's the thing, though. For basically nothing, Quantum, already a fifth of the way to that ultimate, will have the uh, turret back. It looks like we're going to see some swaps cut out from Pirates. They want to run something a little bit more low and slow in the form of the uh, Arisa Roadhog composition. We're going to turn things down a little bit right now as we uh, move away from dive tanks. There's Markov's just chilling out. Pachak's yeah. heading back into... Pachak also <laughs> slowing things down a bit. What are we going to see from Pachak here coming uh, back in the on the act? <laughs> Okay, so the Ash is going to be great for the shield break and just throw in those dynamites and try and bring down Elroy's shield. And uh, then, of course, as they kind of hold in his entrance here, they'll be able to use the resources of the Batiste to help them out. Yeah, you know, low and slow sometimes does win. Slow and steady winning the race and all that. Quantum halfway towards the ultimate and going. And now we're into Arisa nice Shield hit. Break Wars. It was a great war coming out. Wasn't quite able to save Karelius. And that's going to be Pirates looking like they might be in a good position to start cracking this wide open. But aggression was able to bring Karelius back in. And another great port port combo with the hook and the hole. Take Elroy out of the equation. Pirates looking to be in a good position to take this now. And they're going to be doing this with quite a lot of ult charge ready to go. We've Double now got matrix. the Jew Dueling Amp Matrixes, and we've got the Molten Core coming out from Quantum as well, and it lands all over that point. Patchak able to get both the Immortality Field and Quantum, but Karulius getting the D-Mech and the kill. Quantum might be down and out, but that Molten Core is still on the field, causing trouble. Steelers holding on tight to that point. Yeah, truly the key thing there was the fact that Steelers weren't brought down fast enough to prevent them from reaching those ultimates. So obviously having the Amplification Matrix and the Molten Core, they were able to just force Pirates out. And it's actually really sucky for Pirates that they used the, uh, the Supercharger before that happened because they committed because they thought they'd win that fight. So now FAQ is going to be coming in without that on his side, whereas Elroy is so close to having it for himself. And you do not want to be coming into a whole hog and a blizzard. Oh, it was a nice pull from Stormball. <laughs> Luckily, Ice Block was off cooldown. Padshack once more in the back. Unfortunately, Bob not long for this world. Poor sweet, gentle Bob. Brute throws in the side. Nice! Struck Brute cracks this case wide open. Inspector Brute reporting for duty. Pirates are going to be rocking this right way through to point B. Reporting for Brutey. Oh, she <laughs> went there. <laughs> no, that was absolutely disgusting. It was huge. The fact, obviously, the immortality field wasn't available. Steelers were just completely at the mercy of Brute. And Brute didn't want to give them any mercy. <laughs> and one thing, actually, that I really like the Pirates have done in this attack so far is running that Zen Yata because they've had the Discord Orb that's helped them out in a number of occasions, especially when they've been going for those hooks. And now they only need to get a third of a point. They have just under a minute to do it. But the worst they can hope for here is a draw. Yeah, but look at the tools that the Steelers have between the Amp Matrix and the Supercharger and the Blizzard and the Bastion. Pirates are not going to want to be walking into this if they can avoid it. They kind of need to pick before they choose to engage. And it's now high ground versus low ground. Pirates may be finally coming in for this rotation. They do have an Amp Matrix of their own and they've got a whole hog ready to go. If you can get all five of those projectiles through that Amp Matrix, that is a lot of damage. Go with the shield. Yeah, with the shield, with the immortality field. Shield goes down already. Big pole. Stormball able to find one. Lithium goes down. FAQ finds an Elroy. Padjack coming in with a clear up onto Rookie Ram. And with just one tick left to capture, that is going to be Pirates tying us up at the series. What a piece. And a really huge thing at the end there actually was the fact that Steelers, they brought out their Amp Matrix to go against it as well. But it was too far back. So they all had to move forward to actually contest on the point and they couldn't use it So they were straight in that fiery line of the Amp Matrix of Pirates and as well Patrick being up there on the high ground with the Ash So he was just firing straight into them. I mean look how much damage this man is dealing into this team yeah, I, mean, I mean going straight from casting Bob to having 40% of your ultimate charged up already. <laughs> yeah. I was starting to think, is is Patchak maybe like a lucky charm for some of these teams? Like <laughs> any team he's going to move to, just like, oop, straight up in the power rankings. <laughs> maybe like they should... Is Patchak a leprechaun? Each, uh, each 
each season they should move Patrick to a different <laughs> team and just see as kind of like an experiment. Yeah. Just see, you know, how much they <laughs> Patrick, have your people call our people with something. I don't I don't wanna give him too much of an ego. It's too late. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> it's too wrong. late. We've spent far too long talking about Patrick and he's been in Arena Clash since the beginning, so his head's probably about as big as it's ever gonna get, so I wouldn't worry too much. <laughs> very true. Yeah. But no, that was you know, very impressive to see both of those teams were actually able to bring those uh bring the time banks down quite a bit lower mm. than perhaps you expected as they both actually did their original attacks in fairly short amount of time. But yeah, of course I just I really liked uh I, I just really liked how that use of the Zenyatta was mm. able to kind of give them the edge that they really required because it's kind of weird talking about the, the, the Discord Orb as if it's something really special and <laughs> rare when, you know, until very recently, you kind of just expected a Zenyatta to be yeah. on the team whenever because the Discord Orb was kind of a given. Yeah. But in this case, when Anna is just so popular right now and, of course, against some uh, compositions where they are going to be focusing on that Mercy primarily, having the Zenyatta and having that, you know, damage uh, reduction on, or rather, I suppose, damage boost, yeah. however you want to call it, um, is is actually a huge thing, especially if you're going to be timing it with, for example, the Roadhog, mm. where you can be like, okay, orbs on whoever, orbs on Phil, all right, let's time to hook Phil. <laughs> God, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that, that worked out very well for them. Of course, that wasn't the only thing, no. but I think it, it was just a small detail that gave them that edge. Well, it's... it's it's one of the things that sort of like as as an elementary thing of Overwatch. What do you pick? Do you pick raw damage and healing output, or do you pick utility? Because if you want healing output, yeah. Senior is probably not your dude. If you want the utility of a twenty five percent damage boost that the entirety of your team can use, can you and a really. 20%? I thought it went from 30 to 25. Did it go from 25? Oh, 30 to 25. Yeah, that it's was it. Of, it's reduced. It used to be higher. <laughs> but, you know, and, and also to give your team a really visible marker of who to shoot from, the utility that that brings to your team absolutely can't be underestimated, even when it's being run outside of the Zenyatta Goats. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned how you don't necessarily always think about the amount of healing you have. Oh, nice. I can Let's go. Um, <laughs> you, don't, you don't always think about the amount of healing you have. And, of course, when you're running things like a Roadhog who can sustain themselves, you don't really need to think about that quite as much. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's definitely an interesting time to be an Overwatch player now that so many more <laughs> of these options are viable. Interesting time to be an Overwatch caster. It is. Got to, like, pretty much relearn the game. <laughs> Like, who are these heroes? Yeah, hang on. Which What's one of these guys fa- has Earth What's Shatter? a Fabra? What is What is Quantum's Why character not have a Pharaoh? shield? Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, this is Where's a- the German guy? <laughs> <laughs> this is a it's a pretty common pick here. We've got the Farron, we've got the Mercy yep. on the defense. This uh this tower is so good for playing Farah Peekaboo around. Yeah, I mean the first point of Eichenfeld has always been known uh to really kind of be great for Farah, and actually, I find it so funny because in recent times there've been so many people who are adamant that Eichenwald is a goat's only map. <laughs> by the way, uh, you know no. some really <laughs> petulant-sounding people. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but of course, we've seen Patrick come out on the Sombra before. He's going to do some preliminary scouting, most likely. We have seen Pirates make some swaps based on this. Of course, now see him coming out on the Ash instead. Going to be joining the rest of his team. Yeah, once that shield break has that initial info, that's the benefit of being on offense here. You can make your swap nice and quick. Yeah, and it's not even just about the shield break as well, because of course you've got the Pharah, you need someone to be able to deal with her. Yeah, absolutely, but they've already lost Lithium, thanks to a, a nice little zip zop hook hulk combo. Wasn't quite there to follow up on Brew, and that is going to be Elroy down as well. So you've already lost two, including the main tank, Brew on, and finds Quantum with a bit of help there from Disclosure. This is all falling apart for Steelers. Very quick for Pirates, of course having all of that sustained to themselves with this kind of bunker type composition just really gives them everything that they need to be able to pummel that damage into mm. the enemy team and especially when you have that hit scan who can specifically go against your star dps who has very strong counters but well i was going to say it looks like they're not going to switch quantum actually going to be changing onto the hands over here that's going to allow him to use that high ground and be able to get away very quickly as well as having the 
shield break capabilities as well. And the Dragon Strike is so much more useful when going against these bunker type compositions because not only can you force out the immortality field, but because everybody's so close together, you're more likely to deal in damage. Yeah, a lot of the times the Dragon Strike isn't so much about getting kills, it is about burning out some of those resources. For sure. Maybe buying a little bit of space. A beautiful Halt Hook combo coming out from FAQ and Stormble takes Rookie Ram down on the Zenny Adam. Brute here, going to be uh, pretty much ignoring the... Uh, oh no, is, is going gonna, is gonna to utilize that um, amplification matrix. In fact, everybody going to be utilizing that. Pirates coming in, absolutely storming that attack. Not a soul left alive for Steelers. And look, Steelers are changing things up. Actually looking like they're going to be going for goats. This is, well, somber goats. Just okay. go goats forehead. Okay, so we're not going back to full goats, but they're going to be playing for that EMP and try and bring down the team like that and be very brawly here. We've seen the support that El Elroy can receive from uh, from his Zarya. Yeah, but I mean, look how strong that turbocharger, that supercharger was featuring in that kill feed on pretty much all of those kills. They only needed that one ultimate and a bit of help from Bob to completely smash open that team fight. It looks a little bit like Steelers Thanks, haven't Bob. even turned up to this game so far. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Pirates specifically were in that, well, they were in that position where they had the opportunity to actually change depending on Steelers' composition. And so Steelers have been answering to them thus far. And now, you know, the, this new composition that they are now running, they've still got to build everything up. There's not all that much they can do because as soon as the immortality fields out, they're going to be dead. Maybe to the self-destruct. Oh, self-destruct finds aggression. And we've also forced out the transcendence. Ruggie Ram wants to keep what is left of his poor beleaguered team alive. And another Hulk comes in, doesn't connect with anybody. Disclosure with a transcendence of their own, but stacked with the immortality field as well. Maybe maybe not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things, but you want all the sustainability you can possibly have. And another Bob on the field for Padjack Quantum with a rally. Uh, going to be trying to go mano a mano with Bob. Not a fight we're normally used to seeing being taken. Lithium is able to get rid of Padjack, but with the amplification matrix on field, maybe you won't miss that damage quite so much. A nice response to the Graviton Surge with the Immortality Field does get taken out by Cerulius. Elroy coming in, getting rid of Dapper as well. Down goes the Turbocharger, and that is going to be Steelers finally showing up to put their foot on the brake of the car that is Pirates. Yeah, the great thing about that Graviton Surge actually was the fact that it pulled them out from behind the amplifi amplification matrix. So it meant the Pirates weren't actually able to deal in that extra level of damage while Steelers were trying to bring them down. They did actually bring out the Supercharger, as you said, but that was taken down fairly swiftly, so Steelers just were able to move forward. And now they have the EMP ready, so it's something the Pirates have to be very careful of moving into this next fight. Disclosure! Oh, the size of that hack, though! Hits all six. No chance to use any of those ultimates. Disclosure, erased. Everybody down and out. Brute only just got that mech back and already they've had to throw it away. You heard me say it, the Zenyata's name. I was going to say how it was his responsibility to stay out the way and be able to provide that transcendence nope. to the team, but nope, he was caught in it along with everybody else. And now that means that Steelers is going to be holding on to things a little bit longer. Now with three and a quarter minutes kind of left to go, they still have plenty of time to be building things up. And Pirates, we've, they've got things to their name and brute. He is going to be a threat. Oh, oh, that was almost a brilliant attempt at a halt up in to really maximize the uh, damage coming in from Brute self -struck. Sadly, didn't quite coalesce in time. Pirates, they have managed to get Aggression Sound Barrier out, and now out comes the Transcenders. If they can do this with just that one ultimate, although it's worth noting, they have now thrown in the Transcenders and the Amplification Matrix. FAQ, uh, unfortunately, did use the Turbocharger immediately taken down as well, but they have managed to take this fight diving into the back there to deal with Rookie Ram away in the back. The payload slowly inching forwards. Is anybody from Steelers going to be able to get in contest? Yes, we get the Wrecking Ball in, but a Bob there to get rid of Elroy. Padjack always seems to have Bob just as it's required. The Graviton Surge hits the Immortality Field, so nothing really came out of that. The Bob and the parting seconds of his health managing to get Rookie Ram out of the fight as well, but we've got the Spin Cycle almost set up. It's a very difficult point to get that Spin Cycle set up in. Self-destruct over the top and a hack. Hack not necessarily. A hack hits four of pirates, but they're just isn't really anybody from Steelers to keep the contest going. And this is the kind of crazy thing as Pirates came into this without any ultimates and it really looked like Steelers could do it but they've been holding on thus far and they're actually able to get that third point meaning now that Steelers 
have to take it all the way if they are to hope to be competitive. Yeah, and it's not a terrible time bank either. When you think that they were no. going into uh, a composition that is designed to cycle <laughs> offensive and defensive ultimates to deal with incoming threats, the fact they're able to do that with the composition that they had, I think, is a testament to just how strong pirates are at the minute. Definitely. I think... Certainly some interesting choices. I mean, I think Lithium, very strong Sombra, and I'm really liking his EMPs. But the thing is, with the rest of the composition being very goatsy, they have to wait a little bit longer to actually be able to build anything up, and they're not all that useful in the meantime, because goats really requires that brawl. And you can't brawl out with a, a you know, a, a bat Batiste bunker sort of composition. You just can't do it. So they're always kind of left one step behind and waiting for their Sombra to kind of play it out for them. It's, it's this really weird phenomenon where you sometimes see these absolutely massive six man EMPs that disable the entirety of the enemy team, but then nothing happens. Like, yeah. <laughs> it seems like sometimes you use an EMP and the enemy team wins the team fight. And I'd yeah. love to know what the mechanics of that is. Uh, the mechanics is uh, not following up. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I should have brought something to take notes on. Oh, uh, yeah. Next time. Next time. <laughs> I'll set you homework next time. Thank you. Well, Pirates, this is pretty much what we saw from them uh, in, the, in the second half of their offensive run. Nothing changed. Well, it's been working for them, and we've seen what Pachak can do on the Ash. Yeah. It's very, very strong Ash, and she provides so much pressure. Steelers looking like they're going to be coming in once again with the sort of sombre goats. They're going to be running Ruggy Ram on the Ana instead here. So they should be able to provide Elroy with that little bit more beef with the nano but again it's going to take some time to build that up while pirates are constantly dealing in damage going to have some hacks but of course brute can just chase out the song yeah, I, mean, I mean of all the people to try and hack brute is probably one of the most dangerous a very experienced <laughs> player knows exactly where you are and how to respond already chased lithium out lithium still struggling scrabbling around for some of the health so Steelers are on point but they're not really done enough to make this a competitive contest and brute is all over this map has forced Karulius off the high ground now and it looks like just uh, the three tanks here for Pirates trying to hold on to this. I think we've got Padjack in the background. And uh, once more with a bob to show for it. And, uh, you know, <sighs> Steelers did everything right, I think. They, they aggressed in, they started piling the damage, and it just did not work out for them. Something that's actually really interesting about that fight there is that the angle at which Steelers, the last remaining members of Steelers, were trying to fight Pirates was sort of perpendicular to the Orisa shield. So it meant that they were actually having to shoot through the shield twice, essentially. And there was, of course, the immortality field in the middle. So they were really kind of in a position. They should have at least maybe rotated about 90 degrees to uh, to have a go at that one once oh, again. Oh, oh, but starting oh, oh. things off with the Am Matrix. Yeah, you do not want to be walking into that. <laughs> Another beautiful hook out from Stormball. Opened up, just exposing that poor Zarya to the full onslaught of the Amp Matrix. Now, Steelers, they just got away. They do have a number of things at their disposal, but so do Pirates. And so it's going to be all about juggling who does things first. I suspect that Steelers are hoping to wait for Lithium's EMP before they waste anything, and then Ruggeram can nano in. But they've got to wait for Brute. Brute with the bomb, not able to find anything with the blast of said bomb. But we've got to grab it on search and a bob in over the top. Bob getting the first kill and a shatter out from Elroy. Doesn't seem to find too much. The immortality field there doing a huge amount of work. Pirates aggression gets a parting blow on the end. The EMP comes through the lithium, but it comes through so late. That was bizarre. Are we seeing a swap here? That just looked like a panic cue. I mean, maybe, but... If you are swapping things, I mean, so far, no. Oh, okay, here we go. But if you're going to do that, then you should have done that a little bit sooner. Yeah, I think, look, they, they want to just try and match Pirate's damage for damage by sending Ruggie Ram in on the, uh, on the Zendiada, but it might be too late in the game for that. Oh, oh wow. Right into a whole heckin' heap of damage from Pirates, and the rest of it is just clear up. Steelers just... Thanos clicked into dust on that team fight. Yeah, that's the thing with the Batiste, is actually his ultimate does not take all that much time it's to so build quick. up. And it's so quick. Yeah, especially as, you know, when you've got the Batiste and, and the Zenyatta, Zenyatta relatively doesn't actually do that much healing, so uh, Batiste is going to be 
dealing in so much for the team, as well as damage onto the enemy team, that he's just building it up extra fast. Oh, Brute with another oh, one! Yeah, come it on! Almost, it unfortunately all goes into the uh, into the waiting shields there of Elroy, but Panchak, again, controlling these angles, finds Elroy. So you're deep into enemy territory in a 5v6, 4v6 now, and you've got to back out any way you can. But it looks like Stormball and Panchak do not want to let them go. Oh, beautiful prediction there with the Hulk coming in around the side, the hook and the follow-up, and this is now down to just trying to get onto the point and stall out as long as you can. Aggression has used the sound barrier to do just that, but eats the dragon. Brew, great presence of mind, takes him out, gets the displacement kill, gets rid of lithium, and that is going to be all they wrote for Pirates vs. Steelers on Iconvold. As we see Pirates take us to match point. It was also really huge there where... Um there was a big sleep onto Cerulius at the end, which meant that there wasn't going to be that bubble available for anybody. I mean, uh, it looked like Aggression was obviously going to have to use the sound barrier to make some kind of an engage, and it would have really helped to have had that. But it was it was a nice sleep, and then as you say that, uh, you know, the eat on the Dragon Strike and, and the Halt Hook, those pirates on this bunker composition are looking really, really strong. They are really nailing this now the thing is uh it's great for them that it's working so well for them but because we're only in the quarterfinals the question is is the other you know uh, alternatives are the other alternatives going to be as good for them because it has been very backwards and forwards we're currently 2-2 two -two in this series oh sorry 2-1 two two one. Excuse me. We're currently 2-1 in this series and so they've only just been able to turn things around so I don't know. The, the The question is, you know, later on in the playoffs, if they make it through this series, are they going to be predictable to a team that can get through a bunker better? So here's the thing. Like, if you look at some of the heroes being played, and I'm going to use Padcheck as an example. Okay. So <laughs> sorry for everybody else on the Pirates. I, I, I love you all equally. Um, if you look at what Padcheck's been playing, you know, on, on the hit scan roster, he's been playing Ash, he's been playing Sombra, and that means that presumably he's got the mechanical skill there to play McCree, Soldier, if he has to, because there's, the, there's the tracking. And so... Clearly, you have options. We know that Brute is a ridiculously top-flight player. And so, you know, again, doesn't doesn't just have the D.Va, has a whole host of other characters at their disposal. So I, I think we're a long way from having seen everything that the Pirates can show us. It's not that I think that it's everything the Pirates can show us. It's that especially when we go back to that first map, you know, we think about the fact that they were... It, it was close. I mean, they were both 1999-99. Uh, but... Even so, they were still able to have the better taken of them, mm. and that's something that's maybe a little bit concerning. Now, I don't, I don't want to dwell too much on kind of putting them down because they're doing so well mm. in this so far. But my point is more that they're doing extremely well in a particular composition, and the fact that they are relying on that composition so much is that something to be concerned about? I mean, this is something we're seeing currently in other Overwatch tournaments like the Overwatch League as we move away from goats. There are a load of teams that have really made their name being. Mm good goats teams and the question is are they going to be able to stay quite as prestigious as we move into this next meta so of course pirates it's so commendable and absolutely amazing that they are doing so fantastically on this bunker but is there you know anything else and are they gonna have be taken advantage of in the future and mm. if they make it further on in the playoffs by other teams well i mean they're looking pretty good to take this match and move forward onto the uh, onto the semi-finals well, this is going to be where it's all decided moving over onto our payload map this is of course the illustrious junker town the birthplace of the uh, the ultimate pirate ship composition <laughs> which uh, seems like it might play into what we're seeing from the pirates so far this evening very well. Oh, they're very well named. Yeah, indeed. I kind of just realised that. that. Yeah. yeah, no, I just that they just clicked in my head. Wait a minute, they're called pirates. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Let's see what is going on here. So pirates, they're going to be starting off on the attack. So Steelers going to be setting up their defence, actually looking like they're uh, going for what pirates have been succeeding on so well thus far, with the Batiste and the Ash. And running the uh, the diva alongside. Yeah, but looking looking to run the mercy rather than running the uh, the Zanetta, of course, it means that the damage boost is only going on to one person rather than something that the whole team can exploit. Yeah, and of course, you know, once you get that Valkyrie, then you can have the the chain damage boost and the chain healing. But you are right. Uh, usually, you see the mercy, especially if you're running a bastion. But this is going to be a little bit. 
different. Maybe it'll put uh, a little bit less pressure onto onto Batiste. Yeah, quite possibly. However, having Stormball here on the hander means that the the shield pressure war is likely to be one that the pirates are winning more regularly than the Steelers. And as we see the payload start to just uncontested move around this corner and a nice big zip zop in hoped hook combo secure the DMEC and the kill onto Karulius. This is looking like a pretty easy contest for Pirates. Yeah, the fact that Pirates were able to just sit straight on the payload, it meant that Steelers actually had to change their own positioning for the defense, which obviously puts them in uh, the less advantageous position because they're the ones that are kind of compromising around the enemy team. So they're just being pushed out so quickly this is, here. This is a complete route. It's, it's kind of crazy watching the hooks and the hulks and seeing characters just sort of teleport in a straight line. It was happening <laughs> so often in that fight. Uh, yeah, Steelers, clearly something isn't working here. We've got we to gotta have a new look for you guys. Yeah, we see Aggression actually switching on over to the Zenyatta. Maybe they think that they can use the uh, the Discord orbs in the same way that pirates have been doing very well with. Disclosure is actually very close to that transcendence and now already popping the infrasight. So they have all this intel on where Steelers are, unsurprisingly, sitting there on the high ground. But it means they may potentially be going in for an early halt hook. There we go. Yeah, Aggression taken down straight away. So once more in the 5v6, Aggression having made the swap, not able to capitalize on that change of composition. Padshack playing on the low ground. Going for a rotation there. Dragon coming out from Stormball. Not able to find anything but just dislodge the uh, high ground. And that's going to be Ruggie Ram's immortality field down also. So Steelers very low on resources and now very low on main tank as well. Quantum falling very soon after. Padjack does take a bit of the old TNT to the face. And, uh, well, you know, not a lot you can do about that, frankly. Happens to the best of us. Oh, Lithium didn't even get a chance to touch the ground before that uh, Roadhog completely just erased them from existence. Steelers just straight up changing things up yeah, here. Yeah, they got it. Yeah. So they're, they're going for the, the Hanzo, so he'll have that shield break. And once again, especially on this point where you kind of have this rotating high ground in the middle, it's good to have his lunge so you can jump between uh, those spots, maybe get other angles. And of course, having the Anna as well, perhaps she can get the anti nade over the shield. Yeah, Karulius gets the hook, gets the book, thrown at them. Nice nade coming in from Ruggiram. Having to uh, back off there for Pirates. They have lost a couple of members on the back of that, although Stomble gets rezzed. Padjack showing up, clicking heads, doing Padjack things. Getting the better of his opposite number there on Sniper. Ooh, takes a big old volley of orbs to the dome there, but manages to get out and get healed up. Dapper there with the heals ready to go. Hulk coming out, doesn't help. Hulk comes out, doesn't actually connect to anything. Brew is going to have the whole hog ready to go here and we've got a couple of different uh, sources of damage boost coming out of that as well Root looking for the hook hold combo not going to find it FAQ down and out so they've thrown in that uh, that uh, amplification that uh, supercharger there without a huge amount of value out of it but Padshack and uh, Dapper able to bring FAQ back in this might just be pirates pushing this in i don't know how required the transcendence was but nonetheless they provided themselves enough support in comes the bob now just going to be <laughs> holding back so much and patch out getting aggressive wow such a quick take there for pirates and Steelers just didn't really know what to do they were making these changes throughout the map but because pirates kind of had that momentum they'd sort of snowballed in a way that they constantly had a rotation of ultimates to use Steelers just didn't really have the opportunity to catch up with that yeah it's unfortunate Steelers unfortunately responding to the big bang that was the pirates attack there like a field of flighty horses scattering <laughs> to the four corners not able to put up a solid defense however definitely not outside their ability to put up an equally as blistering offensive round absolutely not they certainly have a hefty time bank that they're going to be going up against but nothing is impossible and they did do very well at the start of this series so you know i did say how when you get to you know this part of the series with these payload maps things can start to turn around mm -hmm. yeah. and uh in this case it's gone from Steelers being you know great on control to pirates dominating on the uh payload maps i mean obviously they they won hanamura too but uh 
not in this same kind of absolutely dominating fashion. Interesting looking that Steelers may be going to be going for the Symmetra again and potentially what they are going to go for is seeing where Pirates are holding their defense and they're going to take the fight straight up to them and force them. But actually Pirates, they're not even on the on the uh, high ground. No, this is... Um yeah, an interesting hold and an interesting attack. This is a very, what I would like to charitably call, um, ladder comp game composition, coming oh, out with the... Uh, does feel a bit like that, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? <coughs> Padjack looking for targets. Nothing there just yet. Has maybe identified... Oh, there we go, there's a hog. Nice meaty target. Not, oh, just as I was about to say, not able to find that dome shot does find aggression. Discord orb sitting pretty over on Lithium means that they can't really spend too much time out in the open or else just get risk of being deleted. Bit of cart progress made. Quantum still stuck here on the Symmetra. Hatchak maybe not quite able to find the height they would like there to try and drain in that shot. There's a robot head there somewhere. Patrick already with the Infrasight is going to lock up the Steelers for a little while longer unless they can aggress in under a shield. They're going to want to wait that out. Lithium down already. FAQ managed to pump in the damage on the back of a, a damage boost and a hook coming in from the Roadhog. This is looking incredibly one-sided. Well, okay, I was going to say they're going to have to change because they were waiting for an opportunity that wasn't going to come. You've got to make your own opportunities, guys. <laughs> Fortune favours the bold. But... They were trying to teleport over and Patchak was providing too much pressure for them to actually have that opportunity. So now they've changed things over to the classic kind of Genji composition. And this could in turn put more pressure onto Patchak, especially with the deflect being available. Yeah, I mean, Quantum's been such a consistently good Genji all the way through this series that really this is probably their best chance of splitting this comp open. Nothing coming out of that hog, that halt. Oh, that hook from Hog. There we go. I'll get one of the H's right eventually. Stormball able to get the demect Diva form. So Steelers once more down in a pit looking to try and climb their way back out of it. No ults to play with. And there's going to be a Winston on the end of that fishing line. Brute does receive the Nana Boost, waits it out and heals themselves right the way back up again. Has the whole Hog ready to go. In fact, very nearly a full suite of all teams for Pirates. This is just going to be so hard. Oh, the in dive comes. came in and pinned <laughs> up against that back wall by Brute with a whole hog. Yeah, the team that plays together wins together. Everybody getting in on that. And there's the DMEC launches that uh, clay pigeon that is the pilot deep form up. FAQ tracks them down, takes them out. Lithium looking for heads to click. Struggling to find them. <laughs> and Pir I mean, I just, I'm just eyeing up the supercharger that they still got there because the second Steelers come anywhere close to pirates, they just pull out something and they can, I can kill them off. I mean, they just killed off a nano boosted Winston in <laughs> about a second. You know, Steelers actually changing things I, I, up again. I don't, think, I don't think the dive even landed. I think the dive almost connected. <laughs> and before, before the monkey's feet hit the floor, out came the whole hog. Yeah. Had Jack on a flank. Always dangerous. Oh, Managed to get a couple of body shots in. He wants to get that Zenyata. Knows exactly where the Zen is now. Beautiful dragon out from Stormball gets two. d coming out as well. FAQ large and in charge on the Orisa. Maybe he wants to stagger these out a little bit. Out comes the bash. Yeah, we can sort of afford to ignore that, uh, that brick for a little while longer. What's she going to do? Hit me with a flail? Big deal. And don't you oh. just... You just find it so kind of strange thinking that on Pirate's attack, they <laughs> were through this first this point, point before I blinked. By this point in the map, they finished the map. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell right down already. You know, we talk about teams needing to warm up. If Pirates started cold, they are blisteringly hot right now. They've got to see this happen with everything at this now, and they kind of have out comes the sound barrier, out comes the rally, out comes the transcendence too, but we've already lost the mech. That's no diva left on the field, and the dragon is going to get a kill. 
Rookie Ram managing to find FAQ is a big opening, but there's not many people left to put a foot through the door. Rookie Ram, looking like he might be able to turn this around, gets two. One of them rides straight back up again. They have taken control of the car. They might be able to do this. There is still a Roadhog and a Mercy getting chased out of it. Brute is able to secure the kill onto Lithium, but it is Brute on the Hog coming in with FAQ. And this is going to be a big opener with the self destruct in the back. Doesn't find anything. But that might have been enough. Pirates looking like they may come back in and finally get those kills. Padchak in the back. You can't leave him alone because he's going to find your face and put a bullet in it. And Pirates did actually make a couple of changes at the end there to kind of stall out. But the fact is because Steelers had used all of their ultimates to at least try and win that last fight just to get the cart some way, it meant that they were able to just... Um, they were able to just bring the, you know, bring what bring the they pain. had, bring the neutral fight and still win it out because at that point Steelers didn't have anything to really use against them. Yeah, it feels really weird to me that we went from such an incredibly close game on that opening right. map to, I mean, it's a full-on railroading at the end. It's it's unfortunate <laughs> and you hate to put it in such terms, but that's that's kind of how it, how it worked out. Yeah. You know, we went from a, a blistering completion from Pirates to not being able to even capture point A for the Steelers. And I think... It's a shame because Steelers have looked like such a good team through the group stages and we had really high hopes for them. Mm -hmm. It's a shame that we've got to say goodbye to them here, really. Yeah, and I think Steelers definitely actually displayed a lot of coordination. I think the issue as the series progressed became the fact that they weren't necessarily up to speed in reacting to certain things they would use some of their ultimates at the wrong times you know going back to the emp nanoblade kind of situation where they'd be out of sync with one another and then they would sort of leave it a little bit too long and then also when pirates were doing something successful they were a little bit late to react at certain times whereas in that first map in busan it really was steelers leading it from the beginning which meant that they could kind of sing to their own tune and pirates were the ones who were sort of responding to what they were doing and that's the difference once they were in that back uh, you know that back foot kind of position they sort of struggled to catch up mm. whereas when they were the ones leading they really found their own momentum and their own stride in that situation and they were able to you know really succeed off the back of it yeah yeah and it, again it's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye to the Steelers here uh, and this is starting to look very familiar as we see the Saints move through earlier today we've seen the Pirates with Padshak previously previously of the Spartans move through today yeah. I think this is going to be a very um, family oriented uh, finals and semi-finals <laughs> rounds we're going to incestuous we're, finals well I mean look I had the thought in my head to say that I didn't <laughs> want to go there but there's going to be I think there's going to be a lot of high drama this is going to be sort of games of Thronesian oh. by the time we reach the finals but for myself and Geo, that is going to be it for tonight but say you've been watching tonight's games and thinking to yourself gee that looks like a lot of fun i'd love to get involved well gee. it's gee gee willikers it's really simple um best way to do it go onto your social media platform of choice and look for belong arenas and there'll be all sorts of details there about where your local arena is what events are running and how you can get involved but for myself and for geo that's it for this week we'll be back next week with the semi-finals <laughs>